It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Man, this was a busy week. Mojave's out. iOS 12's out. Oh, yeah, there's some new iPhones and watches, too. We're going we're gonna to talk about all of that and a whole lot more. Renee, Richie, Andy, Anako, Alex, Lindsay are here. You're here. Let's get this thing started. Mac Break Weekly's next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 629, recorded Wednesday, September 26th, 2018. New watch, who dis? Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by LastPass. Secure every password protected entry point to your business. Join over 33,000 businesses and start managing and securing your company's passwords today. Learn more at lastpass.com slash twit. And by Gazelle. The online marketplace for buying and selling used devices. Shop from a variety of certified pre-owned electronics or trade one in for cash. Give new life to a used device at gazelle.com today. And by Cashfly. Make this the last month your CDN bill gives you a headache. Join the thousands of others who trust Cashfly's reliable network. For a complimentary detailed analysis of your current CDN bill and usage trends, visit twit.cashfly.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Apple. And this is busy, a very busy week. Apple with a lot of deliveries. It's a it's a perfect time for Rene Ritchie to return to the fold. He's been on assignment meeting with folks at Apple. He probably has lots of great inside information. Mymore.com. Hello, Rene. Leo, the, the, the FedEx guy was here earlier and he said, what are all these boxes? And I yeah. said, Apple watch bands. And he said, I have tons of them on my truck. Oh, man. <laughs> I took that as a sign. Oh, man. Yeah. Andy Anako is also here from WGBH Public Radio in Boston and Anako.com. Great to see you, Andrew. Oh, great to see your shiny, rested face, Leo. I am rested. Thanks for coming back. You do uh, from, from your from your your social media feeds and Lisa's feed. You uh, you're you're in places that have to be a lot more attractive than the inside of a studio. So it, it means something that you actually chose to come back. To actually, come back. I, I, I did not uh, post post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook because I no longer have accounts on those three sites or Tumblr. But I did uh, send postcards. I'm sorry that you weren't on the list, Andy. <laughs> but I think after talking to some of my family members, you might be glad you weren't on the list. I sent. A total of 17 postcards in three yeah. weeks. <laughs> you and Kevin and Sistin left uh, Instagram at the same time. Yes, Amazing. that's right. <laughs> I am now putting the contents of the postcards up on the blog. I was using uh, Bill Atkinson's photo card, and it has a very convenient screenshot feature. So. <laughs> also here from, it looks like, Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Hello, hello. He's uh, on his way into committee, but uh, we've got him until the quorum <laughs> call. Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core. Yeah, com. it's a pretty busy week here in, in Washington, D.C. <laughs> yes, it is. Do you do anything for the government? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> That's the answer, okay? That's what I thought. Okay. That's all we're going to get, kids. <laughs> Neither confirm uh, nor deny. Neither confirm nor deny. I am looking at a, a lovely sand dune in the middle of the day, although Ooh. later it will darken. And by the way, that is not on by default, which I thought was kind of weird because uh, at least on the all the installations I did of Mojave, this is the new OS 10, it put that in as wallpaper, but it didn't turn on the dynamic wallpaper feature. Is that right? Is that what your guys are experiencing as well? Yeah, it defaults to a familiar sort of a bright experience, and it figures you'll opt into the dark mode yeah. if you're feeling all. So uh, you, you mine, do get the mine choice. Went straight in. You do get the mine choice. Gave me a dark one. You do get the choice of uh, when you first. At least my experience was when you first yes. boot into. Of do you, are you going to play in light mode or dark mode? You get to choose that. But the but but um, I just got a default wallpaper, and then I had to go in. And choose dynamic in the desktop and screensaver system preference. Of which panel. there is one. <laughs> There's one. <dynamic. laughs> yeah. Now, is this going to just alternate between light and dark, or is it going to fades through like th yeah. two or three or no, three or four? I think layers of like you get that's a twilight cool. and then dark. And that's pretty cool. I like that. I can't. That's. Funny. I find it very oppressive during the day. Like I don't like dark mode at all during the day. It makes me feel somber and sad. But I do like it at night because <laughs> it feels more relaxing and and less bright in my eyes. So I like the dynamic one a lot. 
Um, I, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I found that it was it, it, it. As soon as you have the dark mode on, everything else, anything that isn't dark mode, I just was like, ah, oh, bright light, bright light. Oh, bright light. Oh, I was like, I didn't, like Gizmo. I didn't like this at all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the dark. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in production where you just look at dark screens all the time. And so it's always been kind of a pain to have it be so bright. And so it's, it's very nice. So dark mode changes everything. In fact, in a kind of a weird way in light mode, which is the mode we're all used to, um, you know, the menu bars, light, uh, the, the, the controls, the windows are all light, but as soon as you go to dark mode, everything goes dark, the menu bar. And it's odd because, uh, this I, it's San Francisco, right? The font here. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't um, look like it looks different in, in with a dark background somehow. <laughs> it's a little. Maybe that's just my eyes, but it it seems like it was designed for a light background. As soon as you go to a dark background, it seems like it's interesting. The the yeah. the uh, the the um, what do you call the thickness of the stroke? That seems like it's a little off. Line weight. Yeah. yeah, the line weight. Is it, there, there are a lot of things just to get used to. Um, I, I'm not even totally used to the time on my uh, on my iPad no longer being in the center. So there's a, there's there's a lot to get used to. I, I do like the I do like the dark mode. I do like uh, the auto dark mode. Sometimes, especially for people who are freelancers who are their own bosses, it's appreciated to have these little external cues that time is passing. Uh, and that I, that sounds like a joke, but it isn't. <laughs> Ars Technica, uh, you know, no longer, John Syracuse is no longer doing those big long reviews. John, uh, um, I'm sorry, Andrew Cunningham now does them. But uh, they have that, whatever it is, 14-page review of, of yep. 10.14. It goes on and on and on. And uh, if you really want all the details, his conclusion, the best update in years for the Macintosh. And I have to say, it does, uh, there are many things to like about Mojave. I haven't even really uh, delved into the the deepest parts of it he says dark mode looks rad accent colors injects some much needed personality he likes quick actions and the new quick look which i i think that that looked very yeah. promising in the demos stacks do what they're supposed to do they won't stack folders password i had a auditing. weird problem with stack. like so I, I didn't manage 14 pages like andrew i did a, a little bit shorter review but my thing is i always dump stuff on the desktop and then i would feel bad about how cluttered it looked and i would clean it up and with stacks i don't notice it looks cluttered anymore so i'm afraid <laughs> to actually count how many documents are now oh on my desktop. interesting yeah it's true it kind of hides it just looks neat now and i just keep, I play like eighteen thousand documents <laughs> uh, um um any negatives? One, the one negative I might report is that Safari now is choose a number of extensions, turns them off, uh, including my ad blocker. You have to manually kind of re-add ad block origin if that's what you use. Um, it's uh, it doesn't. It seems to be. It seems like you can do it, but for some reason it turned mine off. They turned off legacy extensions legacy. because they had some security issues, right. but all the new type extensions work now in safari what they do when you go to more extensions though is they send you to the mac app store which also yeah. has by the way been completely redone i i keep having to yeah. end i'm so tired of entering in my app store password <laughs> <laughs> i have entered it in i probably several dozen times between the new iphone and the and then and the various versions of mac. it's almost like you, you want to get a long, you have a long password i think that's the thing is like you take on i'm gonna have a long hash so that i'm secure and then you're typing it in all the time, right. and you're just like, oh, right. my gosh, this is a horrible mistake. So these extensions that it lists in the Safari extensions, are it's a short list, not a particularly useful list. And many of them, including, I think, all the ad blockers are paid. Um, but that, but this, it isn't, in fact, required that you get your extensions from this list, despite no. what this looks like. What is yeah. the story? <laughs> You, I mean, as long as they respect the new, the new system, the new architecture for plugins, you can get them from anywhere. I think I downloaded like the password one off the password website, and uh, right. I use Ghostery just so I can keep track of how many trackers are popping up all the time, and I think that one just came off Ghostery's site. So I just downloaded them willy nilly as I wanted them. Yeah, Chrome does a good job of that. You can actually with the latest edition, you actually just the. Security tab or the 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 icon is now like actually a drop down menu that will give you a full report on what's going on with that site. So I'm I'm glad to see every every web browser uh, have, understanding that you have to understand these things that there's all the stuff going on behind the scenes that you need to know about. To get you block origin, I had to go to Gore Hill's GitHub. Gore huh. Hill Gore Hill's the uh, creator of it. Scroll down and find the port because there's a port of uBlock Origin for the new Safari. So um, 
it takes you oddly enough to the old extension gallery so that's still in in that's still in place even though yeah. apple took me to the app store so that's a I, growing pain is it yeah is it it's not ne a negative though right it it no, it, again, they're just they're they're they I think the old extensions just had vulnerabilities that they would rather people not right. use anymore, so they're blocking those and they're using cleaner ones. Good. We're totally burying the lead here, though, Leo, and that is uh, icons and tabs. You can get fave icons in Safari tabs now, <laughs> not could... on by default, but you can turn them on. Oh, really? Yeah, you couldn't get yeah. that before. Oh, let me let me see how to do. Oh, that. Oh, it's a it's a delightful story. So they originally did want them, but then Steve Jobs saw the 16-bit icons that were passing for fave icons and thought they were way too ugly for Safari. So wanted Apple to redraw every icon. And then legal told him that was not in Apple's purview to redraw every icon. So he said, <laughs> fine, no fave icons. Uh, really? It took a while before. So where do I re-enable this? In the settings, you can go to uh, Safari settings and then just There's turn a on. box somewhere. Yeah. I'm looking for it. Search security. I think it's just privacy, in the general appearance websites. one. It's probably under web web. Websites? Oops. No. General. Safari preferences. Homepage. Come on. Favorite show? No. Uh, hmm. Is it? Is it? A, it's an advanced feature, isn't it? <laughs> Mine is beach balling. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Okay. Good to know. I'll find it. Good to know. This dark mode. Some. You know. I have to admit. And this is Safari, right? Which is designed. Yeah. By Apple to work with dark mode. I have mixed feelings about this, Alex. You. You think aesthetically this is appropriate? Yeah, the only concern, the only thing that I don't like is that I feel like the text is a little too high contrast. Yeah. So the white is too white. I wish that you could, um, you had some preferences that let me, I actually want to make it darker. So I, I kind of want to push all the con icons a little less contrast and a little, um, the, the, the things that look like they're almost pure white. Yeah. I'd love to push them back just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I feel like in, in mail is where it really shows up for me that I actually have a hard time uh, reading it. Um, I also and, don't and so, like the white borders. Or, I guess they had to do something like that. but this They can, but it's too, it's too contrasting. Janky, I, I think that yeah. it, it needs to be, I, I just, like, for instance, if they cut half of that brightness down, yeah. it would... Yeah. It would just look nicer. And it would gray. just be easier to look at. Yeah, yeah, it's a little yeah. too, like, as you can really use, and Apple is generally very good at using different levels of gray to kind of guide you. Right. So this kind of stands out as, as I think, a little bit of a misstep. And they'll, 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 some I'll update, it. it'll probably be I'll a little darker. Yeah. yeah. And this is, by God, this is about as nitpicky as, as you can oh, go. Oh, you can go to Apple's developer it's, site so and they have a whole. Go ahead, Renee. Sorry, I was going to say they have a whole talk. They have a, a whole design session from WWC where they explain in painstaking detail how the glyphs work in dark mode. Right. And you can't just invert a glyph because it looks all wrong. Right. And how right. It, you can't just have cold black because people have an aversion to just pure gray. So they actually pull the color of the background dynamically to tint it. So it's it's never quite absolute gray. It's always a little warmer or cooler, just that you feel more comfortable with it. It's, it's fascinating to watch. Uh under the hood, faster, better, smarter. APFS now is available on Fusion Drives. That's good news. Yeah. Um, anything else uh, under the hood that we should be uh, addressing, talking about? Not like iOS 12, where Apple actually took the people responsible for the frameworks and stuck them in a cave for three or four months and said, <laughs> Do it make this stuff faster, make, it, make auto layout faster, yeah. make collection views faster, make everything faster. Uh, the biggest change here is, is really a partial change, and that's the advent of iOS apps and all the... Yeah. Marzipan frameworks. That's the biggest in, inside change. Yeah, I, I was I was going to say I, I really do hope that this is just the first swing of the bat for yes. uh, uh, for for this because. I, I, I was I was very disappointed in everything that I saw in the betas and so kind of surprised it wasn't improved in the release version. It's just that this is uh, it really does look like someone just did a command C command V from iOS to Mac OS. And so much of the interface just doesn't make urgent sense when you have a trackpad handy now. It looks super stripped down. You, if you, you do want to tap you at the screen uh, and that's when you remember that the that Mac OS doesn't have a touch screen. Uh, and uh, it's really disappointing because I felt as though, if anything, Apple would pour resources into making sure that these apps, these cross-platform apps that they put into Mojave are absolutely stellar and stunning and make the case to users and developers that, see, this is how good uh, a, a Mac app that shares code with an iOS app can be. And it, 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 if, but unfortunately, it just makes you one, worry and wonder if Apple cares if Mac apps <laughs> look exactly like iOS apps and function as poorly as a bad port of a Windows app could be.
Yeah. I take it even further in that they're not even the same. Like if you go to the news app, you can swipe sideways. Works exactly as you expected. If you go to the home app and you try to swipe between rooms, it's like a weird game of breakout where, oh, it bounced back. Oh, I, I made it through. Oh, now <laughs> yeah. it's stuck again. Oh, and it like even the behavior between those two apps, one works and one doesn't, which is a flabbergasting. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think part of the problem is that I think Apple believes that more people use the trackpad for multi-touch type things than actually people do there, there there are some shortcuts that i think that a lot of people like but they i don't think that people that most people are using the full library of multi-touch taps squeezes pinches and, and swipes like in, in ios navigation style on the mac as they as they do on the ios it's just it doesn't feel instinctive you know so let's I, let's I, hope I, they improve things yeah, I think the only thing I do is I want to go to the desktop and I want to come out of the desktop. You know, like that's the, you know, the, the little <laughs> yep. like three or four open and, and closed is, is the thing that I, I think I turn all the rest of them off. I, I yeah, find well, it too, well, too many things. I'm, I'm only speaking for myself, but I, I had to I had to turn off a lot of the a lot of those multi-touch features because the trackpad is wonderful. It's root, but it's really, really big. And so many times I didn't know that I was act that I accidentally had a third finger j touching just enough to turn the to turn one gesture into another gesture. And so to prevent myself from accidentally triggering a feature I didn't want, I wound up turning off the majority of all these navigations features. Uh, we also will be saying goodbye to 32-bit applications on Mojave. <laughs> Any, uh, you uh, get a warning with Mojave. The next version of Mac OS will ditch them for good. Okay. I haven't. And, I actually haven't run into any at all so far. Yeah. Oh, do you run Adobe software, Leo? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lightroom does, has That's kind warned of, me. Uh, is Lightroom one of them? Uh, I get like these weird Adobe agents that I think is the oh. one that manages the download of the oh, other apps. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they can update that. Can, it, can Xcode even build 32-bit uh, apps still? I was, I was trying well, to figure that out earlier today. I think they a call recorder. I think they put out a letter. Uh, they're, they're brilliant. The Ecamm folks are absolute geniuses, and they said they hadn't been able to get <laughs> call recorder working on Mojave yet, so they were yeah. they were putting it on pause for now, which yeah. is sad. That, that's that's why I like I like it on I only have it on I have two Macs that I use for day to day stuff I have it installed on the desktop I don't have it installed on the MacBook for that reason that there I feel as though I'm going to encounter uh, not huge apps that don't work but a module that an app re relies on uh, that might be still stuck in 32 bit mode and I'm I rather I'm, I'm hanging back on my on the on the MacBook for at least a couple of weeks uh, I know that there's already an update that's in the developer chain so we'll see what happens yeah audio and Hangouts doesn't work for me on Mojave. Yeah. <laughs> Little thing. audio doesn't work at all. I think I would no, expect you sound no like a robot. program to you work. You sound like a robot. Yeah. Um, in my no. home. update has changed. There's now in the system preference panes an update preference pane, which is yeah. uh, newly added, and it looks as if updates are going to go through, or are they planning on having updates to go through? Uh, this is <laughs> system preference pane, right? Yeah, it's more like iOS now. So you just you go to your basically your settings and then it'll either auto download. Auto download is a big thing in iOS 12 and Mojave now. You can just set it and forget it, which, you know, if you're not doing system critical stuff, is probably fine for you. If you are doing system critical stuff, turn that off. And then when an update comes out, look at Twitter for a good day or two before yeah. you do any updates. You have yeah. under the advanced tab some granularity. You can automatically check for updates, download and available. By default, uh, I should zoom in on this a little bit. By default, uh, installing Mac OS updates is not automatic. Yes. Installing app updates is, and that's that's handled by the App Store, not by this control panel, but the control panel controls it. Install system data files and security updates uh, is by default automatic, and I think that's probably something you want to have automatic. Yeah, I was wishing I that they that. would. I I haven't I haven't had an update come across since I updated to Mojave on that other machine yet, but I hope that there's they they handle the they they handle a rejection. A lot more, more dig, with more dignity than uh, than previous editions have. It's still, it's still like a nightly routine that I have to say, no, don't. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing when I'm trying to get as much done in the next 90 minutes as possible before I go to bed to do four, to do three system up. Excuse me, to do three updates for apps that I only occasionally use. But yes, please do annoy me about that tomorrow. So mine is mine is like I wake up in the morning and the thing said the update was not able to install. Would you like to try again now in an hour tonight? And I click tonight and then tomorrow morning it's the same thing. Yeah. I kind of I kind of <laughs> wish there were a third option at some point where like after the third or fourth time that you that you reject, it, it'll, it'll remind you again like at that same time. And then now, now there's a new option. I'll see you in hell first, Mojave. <laughs> and they say, okay, we get it, we get it. <laughs> 
Uh, somebody in the chat room is saying, I don't see the purchased apps in the App Store. You have to, it's in a different spot. This is more like iTunes now. Uh, you click on your account down here and it'll show uh, apps that you've been purchased by you or yeah. by other family members, which is nice. And you can reinstall those. Uh, that's a very handy feature that I really, really like yeah. in uh, Mac OS. Uh, so that hasn't oh, been so disappeared. It's just, a, it's just, this is a whole different UI in the App Store. It's very different. Oh, Ken Case with his very yeah. dapper hat. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Look at that, <laughs> the master planner. I immediately installed OmniFocus uh, three on yes. all of my devices. Of course, of course. anything from Omni is going to be good. Yeah. Um, what else? Anything else to say before we uh, move on? Because there are a lot of new things from Apple. I mean, the security and privacy stuff is nice. There were initially a few people who complained that it was too much like Windows Vista's universal access controls, where they they were yeah. afraid that they would get hampered by dialogues all the time. But after running it for a few months, like they were very, they were, and I, I'm not a developer. I don't use Xcode and I don't use a bunch of other things. And I know there were some annoyances with Xcode that Dave Nanian did a really good blog post on. But in general, it's been, can I use your camera? Can I use your microphone once? Uh, the Finder one is confusing. I wish they would, re, you know, because I don't think anybody knows why an app would want permission to use the finder um so i'm hoping they can reword that but in you general know what I'm, I'm seeing a lot is uh accessibility preferences oh yes everything chrome everything needs accessibility preferences why is that Dropbox. What it, well yeah well, mm -hmm. should i worry should i give this should i just say yeah 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 okay they want deep file access and the easiest way for them to get it is to ask for accessibility access because then they can basically the same thing as text expander and a lot of other things it gives them a lot more control over your computer and there was some controversy over it because people thought it was a bit of an overreach um but i've been using it and i haven't noticed any any <laughs> weird behavior from it yeah okay so that's good to yeah i mean i'm basically giving everybody permission when they ask but uh, but it is confusing and when there's so many of them people do get dialogue yeah. fatigue so i hope they can yeah. tune the balance yeah yeah, um, I gotta say, I really do, one as a small feature, but it's one of those magical ones that I like to see from Apple. I really like continuity camera. Just this idea of <laughs> oh, isn't that a, cool? That yeah, that that if you Tell need us to what that a is. picture, some if you want it, like mm -hmm. uh, if you need to insert a if you need a picture to be inserted someplace, uh, you're used to. Well, I'll just I'll get it from uh, my photos library, or I'll get it from this folder. But you can also say because it knows that your iPhone or iPad is nearby and it does have a camera, you can will let you just simply pick up your iPhone, take the picture, and there is no like airdrop or anything. It just simply magically is it magically is saved into that document or wherever you want it to go. Uh, and for things like uh, uh, when you when you when you match it with things like OCR and the ability to say, well, here is a page for, here is a page from a book that I want to quote in its entirety. The ability to simply hold up that camera and have that OCR and then the text flows into the document at the insertion yeah. point. Uh, it's just it's again, it's not the sort of thing that is that is a, a, a paradigm shifting. But this is exactly the sort of stuff I was in, I was hoping that I'd be able to do in 2018 with a computer. It's just oh, I see, I see you have a phone nearby. I, I see it's one of those newfangled ones with a camera. By all means, don't 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 save it to your Dropbox then import it. Just I know how to do that. I'm smart. I'm a computer. You spend thousands of dollars for me. Let me start to pay you back for letting me into your home. By the way, here's what you'll see. I, I just opened Chrome for the first time since uh, the upgrade. Google Chrome and a lot of apps, at least four or five apps have asked this so far of me, would like to control this computer using accessibility features. By the way, that's not in the accessibility control uh, system preference pane. It's in the security and privacy, yeah. privacy preferences. So you open that up and you'll see a number of applications uh, that want this permission. You mentioned Dropbox. Uh, there's Google Chrome. You'll have to unlock this to, to get into it, which is kind of a pain. And then you can check the box in Google Chrome. So you're saying, Renee, that that's normal, that's okay, allow it. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, a, it's again, an easy way for them to get the file system level access. Right. Apple's protecting a ton of different things. I think this is good. I mean, it's, you know, of course, course, if it's Chrome or Dropbox and you know the name, you're going to say okay. And if it's, you know... Yeah. Hacker Tools 967, you're going to say, whoa, whoa, hold on there. So I, I yeah. don't mind that at all. But at the at the same time, uh, I've been reading on I've been reading in message boards a lot of developers who are having problems with very basic things like I need to be able to locate where this folder exists. And with old sandboxing, it was very very easy for me to just take that away from the yeah. user because I know it has to be in one of three places uh, mm -hmm. without having them uh, search for it. And now there are new APIs that says oh, we don't like your app being able to see that far into the uh, across the landscape. Just have the user select find it for you. 
And the developer saying, yeah, but uh, that's another step that I can take care of because it's it's not going to be it's not going to be in, in the in the system library folder. It's not going to be in the music folder. I know it's going to be in three places. Let me just check these three different places to see if the folder exists. Yeah. So there's going to be some more growing pains, I think. Certainly from the point of view of developers, it's a pain in the butt. But from the point of view of users, if you go to security privacy and you look at the privacy tab, there are, you can really, this is much more like iOS where you really can see who's got access yep. to contacts, calendars, photos. I mean, it's the convenience versus security conundrum. Yeah. Well, I think this is a good, and this is, this is very much inspired by mobile. And I think that that's a, that's a good, a good thing to take from mobile. I don't, I, I don't mind that at all. Um, I, I like, I especially like the idea of the user being informed and right. being able to look like months later, they might, they might have clicked through a dialogue box because again, you've right. got 90 minutes before you have to leave the office to get something done and then something it's interrupting you. And if you just simply say, okay, you get to get on with the next thing you want to do. It's good to be able to see, oh, I'm just curious. What does this, what does, what does a Microsoft office get to do? And you're kind of, or you're surprised that a, a solitaire game wants to know your location and wants to be able to see your pictures folder saying, why is it doing that? And I haven't played that in three months, so I'm just going to delete it. That sort of stuff, I think, is a really, really solid thing. There's, there are a lot of ideas from mobile that really enhance Mac OS, and I'm glad when Apple makes these good choices. Show, walk me through continuity uh, camera. So I have my iPhone. I'm going to take a picture of a document. What do I do to get this to you go? You need to initiate it from your Mac. So you need okay. to like do it like from pages or some other and I've system had, that supports it. I've had some trouble it. with Keynote. I've had trouble with Keynote where it just times out. You haven't had that? I can no, see it's the phone. working for me. So if, if I'm in Keynote and I... And I uh, um, uh, I'm so try let's say here document. I've got a blank uh, pages document. What would I do to say I want to embed a picture in there? I don't it's know if you media. need a photo holder. It's under but media. You can right click. So if you click on yeah. media... And, it'll, and you'll see your phone, or you should. Ah, Leo's so XS, take photo. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then I'm going to take a picture. Uh, let's see, I'll take a nice picture of myself. <laughs> and, uh, okay, I did. Use photo. And now, oh, wow, look at that. That yep. is pretty sweet. But you're saying, Keynote, you've had some issues with that. Yeah, I just tried it again, and it's still it's still not working. Um, is, you know, it just using, is it using the same stuff as AirDrop, or is it something different? Yeah, no, it's very similar. And some people are wondering like why you would do that because if you have a laptop or an iMac, you have a camera on it. But those are horrible cameras. Oh no, 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 no. Well, yeah, and it's this is awesome to be able to yeah. use this is to scan yeah. stuff or you're not, no, not going yeah, to you're not going to pick up your MacBook off of your desk and, and yes, pivot it exactly. around yeah. so you can take yeah. a picture of yeah. So yeah, so I'm going to take a let's see let's scan a document here. So I don't how why is that different? Use your phone's camera to scan a document. Okay, let's do that. It's going to be multi-page. Oh, okay. yeah. well, it can be it can be multi-page. Okay. Drag corners to adjust. I see. Keep scan. I get it. So it gives you some more controls over what's going on, and then that goes. That's going to end up uh, save. Oh, I have to say save for. I get it. It's multi, as you said, and there it is. Look at that. That's sweet. That's in Keynote. So I don't know why. I don't know what your problem is. It's Let's almost see. enough to make me forget that it's like four years later, and we still don't have handoff for media. Not quite enough to make me forget that. <laughs> yeah. Almost. I'll tell you, I was trying to use AirDrop between Macs and uh, iOS uh, on the cruise ship, and, mm. and partly that's because you're on the cruise ship Wi-Fi or you're on. No, we, they should be. I should be in because you're. It should it's happen. Point to yeah. point Wi-Fi. It should know. have nothing to do with the cruise. Eh, it didn't work very well very often, but that's okay. That's okay. I, they, I live on AirDrop now. It's like I do think you? <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it's, it's cross. Uh, it's cross OS. It's iOS. Yeah. To Mac OS. Okay. Good. All right. That's. As long as you have a recent Mac, the old Mac used a different kind of AirDrop, but then you... You can't the, get if more recent Bluetooth than this. Now. this <laughs> no, the, totally. This as long as you have Bluetooth 4.0 or later, you're fine. I just want to point yeah. out anybody watching video that I am using <laughs> the external GPU. I haven't used it in months, but I am using it for no reason. Not and he is also stroking it thoughtfully. I have to say, I, I decided... In a, to, in a paternal way. Yes. Well, I spent some money on this. Like a, like a favorite child. It's pretty. Like a favorite child, but useless. Uh, <laughs> I did take the i9 MacBook Pro uh, on the trip, and I have to say, having all of that performance under Lightroom, which is normally really painful to use, I didn't have to use any fancy workflow. I went right into Lightroom. Yeah. Everything was fast and and just felt great, and that's without... I did not bring the eGPU <laughs> in my luggage. That's without the eGPU. Um, all right, good. I mean, I think in general, there, have there been any uh, cries of pain 
On Mojave, there was a, it came a out a couple on of really Monday odd one. Tuesday, maybe. Yeah. No, there are a couple of really odd ones. Like Apple put up an article saying if you had a very specific iMac, a late 2012 iMac with three terabyte drive and 27 inch screen, oh. you had to stop using. You had to stop using Boot Camp <laughs> if you wanted to update to Mojave. Yikes. Not like a two terabyte drive, not like a, a 2014 iMac, but just that one model. And I haven't been able to figure out why yet. But there's a couple weird I, things like that. that. That that sounds like there's an engineer who just had like a bad divorce or breakup, <laughs> and he just and she just want, he or she just wants to make sure that Kevin's MacBook specifically mm -hmm. doesn't work. <laughs> Not going to work. Uh, yeah, those are the kinds of things that are harder to detect in massive public beta tests, which Apple yeah. has done, and are going to crop up. But 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 the advantage of having all these public uh, beta test users is, is this has been tried on a lot of Macintoshes and has been. And I realized yesterday I haven't seen a Facebook button on a website in so long. I barely remember <laughs> they existed. Oh, you know, it's interesting when you get rid of Facebook. Yeah. Uh, how much the world expects you to have a Facebook account. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of depressing, really. Um, all right. Somebody's asking uh, about LastPass. I actually, uh, I've been using LastPass without issue, but I use, I haven't downloaded, and I should try downloading the standalone app, but I haven't had any problem with that. They're a sponsor of ours, so I have some interest. I have to say LastPass on iOS 12 uh, or any password manager, I presume, is a real yeah. revelation with the autofill now on iOS 12. It's fantastic. And you barely notice it. It just looks at your face and fills your passwords. It's amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love that. Uh, let's talk about uh, iOS 12 because we also got that. We got all the, all the OSs got updated. Anything to say about iOS 12 except that, you know, those of us who have been using it for some time are happy the rest of you have it. Shortcuts is now Shortcuts. Yeah. yeah, not workflow, and uh, it's I love. Have you seen some of the stuff? I mean, some of it is super sad, but some of them are super impressive. Like there's one where you just tell Siri you're being pulled over, and it turns <laughs> off everything, turns on the camera, alerts your emergency what? contact, starts recording, yeah. and as soon as you say you're safe, it sends a video to your contact. That's built into shortcuts. No, that's like no, no someone somebody like made that. that. Made oh yeah, that's yeah. sad. That's it's a, sad, but it's brilliant. The DWB shortcut, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's 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 all about having control over this device that you own, and that's uh, that's why shortcuts is just uh, in and of itself is the reason to upgrade to iOS 12. Uh, I, just this morning, I was I was doing the same thing that I do like almost every Wednesday morning uh, when I have uh, breakfast with friends, and it's like, oh, if I had a, if I hadn't switched to Android a few years ago, my phone would right now be sending that text message saying I am actually leaving the house right. Now I am 15 minutes away on my bike, but please order me my usual breakfast. Uh, but no, like like a, like a dope, I had to actually do that manually on my. I could have I could have done that. I, I, I could have used a, a couple of different macro tools on Android, but nothing that this this is like that was like 2001 type technology. This is again the sort of feature that you hope that you could you would be able to use in 2018 on a phone. I uh, I was in, so inspired by shortcuts. I downloaded uh, Launch Launch Control Pro, Launch Center Pro, yeah. <clears throat> and then I saw this post on a microblog by uh, Vasta. He says, inspired by at Eli. Quick look at my current home screen. It's a minimalist home screen. There's just four icons in the dock. <laughs> Between automation offered in shortcuts, drafts, things, and Launch Center Pro, I am living the mostly empty home screen life. <laughs> That is I mean, inspiring. I forget <laughs> this, who wrote it, but someone's like, Apple is actually documenting X, call, uh, X callback URL. I'm living in a different time and space. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Launch Center Pro uses is the, is yeah. the URL scheme. Uh, the fact that Apple is now embracing it, supporting it, and uh, shortcuts is here. I just, and I you feel like automation is, shortcuts. It's amazing. It's ama automation is really, you know, I know that Sal is uh, spinning in his grave, but uh, so, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sal was just here. Sal Segoyan, <laughs> who created, you know, really was the yeah. champion for this uh, at uh, Apple for years and left Apple, uh, I think, somewhat involuntarily a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I asked him. He's very gratified. He said, the, you know, it, it would be nice to have, you know, that kind of support on Mac again. But uh, mm -hmm. it's still automation is so important, I think, to people who use computing. Not not average everyday users, but uh, to people who want to use it in a, a more well, sophisticated way. And, and there's things that you just can't do. I, I this was a long time ago, <laughs> another lifetime ago, in, in probably 1994 or five, and I was I was actually running a um, the production for a magazine, 
And one of the things that we used automation for, and it was a mixture of Apple scripts and, and FileMaker, we had, we had all of these ads that had to go into classified in the back of a, in, into the back of the magazine. And so that was all being managed in FileMaker. And then we had to take all that data and we had to get it all into Quark Express and format it all correctly and make sure that it didn't have any weird things at the end of the page and, and all those things. And that's, and that was like, you, you didn't, you didn't try to figure out how to handcraft that. You just kept on working the script. You know, you just kept on working like, okay, well, didn't do that. Let's let's add a little bit more to it. And it could get very complicated with display ads and all kinds of other bits and pieces. So it's, it's why one of the one of the heavy users of Apple Script has been the print industry, because you just do a lot of formatting and a lot of process um, with it. And it's really you, you you just couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't even know how they did it before that. Like like when I think about people who had to like do it on paper and then put it in, I was like, oh my oh, gosh, my hand, that yeah. would, it just it just hurts my head, you know. So it but but that automation of how to insert all of those things into into bits and pieces is is just such a key to the operation. By the way, I uh, thanks to the chat room, I am now getting the police shortcut on, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that. I I can get I can uh, <laughs> configure the shortcut. Who would you like to be messaged in event of being pulled over? Okay, good, good. I can add uh, I can add my wife <laughs> or Andy. I mean either Andy way. or Renee. <laughs> yeah, yes. one, one of you should know this for sure. You should you should have someone in every time zone or every three time yeah. zones so that makes so that someone will be awake. Who would you like to be sent a copy of the recorded video? <laughs> I'll send that to Andy. <laughs> Post I mean, it again, directly to Instagram. Oh, it's, ever, yeah, actually, you know what? Brilliant. I could send it to my WordPress blog. That's where I should send it. Yeah, blog it. I have a special uh, WordPress email address. That's what I'll do. So blog that video of being... Oh, I should mention that we have Matthew Casolini, who was one of the work uh, the workflow team members, writing all the guides for us on iMore. Oh, so nice. So if you want to get started, you awesome. can go there and he... He does everything from getting started to using it on all the different devices. And I was so excited I got so woke good. up at four in the morning and started playing with shortcuts and trying to figure out how I could like post an animated selfie to my blog automatically and with a push of yeah. a button and stuff like I that. I just said I wanted my Phil's coffee and it said it would take <laughs> me a day and fifteen a day and a half to drive there. Like, ah. <laughs> so police pauses the music, sets do not disturb on, sets the brightness all the way down, gets the current location, sends a message to my wife saying, I'm getting pulled over. My current location is here. <laughs> Takes a video from the front camera, saves it to the photo album, yeah, se brilliant. sets the brightness back to normal. <laughs> Sends a message. Here's a video of the police interaction to my blog. <laughs> Thank you, Robert A. Peterson on Reddit for creating one of the yeah. most. And it goes on. There's more. One of the most amazing shortcuts ever. Holy cow. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, that just Again, shows you. A, a feature that in 2018 that we all wish we didn't have. need. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, I can literally save lives. It's amazing. What else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are, is a reference in the iOS 12.1 beta to a iPad 2018 fall. Yeah. yeah. How's that possible? How could that be? <laughs> so when is this uh, event going to be? I, uh, may, I'm Late hoping. October? I'm holding out uh, hope yeah. that I might get invited. <laughs> will, it, will it be an event, you think? Uh, I think. I mean, they have iPads and they have Macs, and that's usually enough for a very small October event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would do it. And the iPad sounds like it's a big like usually when there's a redesign, they like to get it shown off on stage. Yeah. 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 Also, given given the people that they're trying to sell these to, they've already they already had the event for people who uh, don't have a whole lot of money for an iPad. This is for people who are who they're trying to woo away from uh, things things like the the new Surface Pad and the new and uh, really cool five six seven hundred dollar uh, Chromebooks and uh, and other stuff. Uh, uh, Google's probably going to have something interesting to show off uh, as a, as a new Chromebook in, on October 9th with a lot of new features. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have have an actual event plan so they could say we know that the, there's a reason why this costs a thousand dollars. That's because it is the best damn tablet you can possibly buy. But don't call it a tablet yeah. because it's an iPad. It's a computer. It's better than a tablet. It's better than a laptop. It's an iPad. <laughs> uh, of course, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the connector. You know that the you know the, there were those rumors, with yeah, that it would go with Type C, right? It would allow yeah. you to uh, charge it a lot faster, theoretically, yeah. uh, and and possibly it could open up uh, a, a USB C connection would open, I think, open up the iPad to a lot more 
inputs. You know, someone like me, uh, you yeah. know, more direct inputs to, for video, uh, all kinds of other bits and pieces. It could be a, a truly completely low latency monitor uh, for for a computer. Uh, you could be digitizing stuff. You could it could open up a whole new industry. Yeah, you know, that's if they, that's, if they that's open that up. That's what I was thinking, particularly particularly given that these are the iPad Pro models. Uh, as an accessory to a MacBook Pro, uh, being able to be a slave second display with an iPad Pro quality to a MacBook Pro, and also uh, be, having the access to uh, Apple the Apple Pencil, like we just saw how cool it is to be able to have continuity camera. Imagine having like continuity tablet. Where this is, it will say, "Oh, I see you have, I see you have an iPad, and it's docked via USB-C. Would you like to use this as as a second screen with a touchscreen input device uh, layered on top of it?" There are a lot of really cool things they could do with USB-C. Maybe we wouldn't even see them in the first year, but there are a lot of super cool things about a uh, an iPad with USB-C connector. Well, and also if if, if you released a, a a Mac Mini with USB-C and you had a iPad with a USB-C, you can yeah. just have a touchscreen with your Mac Mini. Well, also, say. also that that huge, humongous battery inside my iPad Pro, just as a thing to charge my phone with. Uh, that that also would be if that was a day one feature. That would I'd be thinking about how much money I could lay my hands on <laughs> on the ship date and eh, maybe making some rash decisions. We should mention that uh, Patrick Wardle, who is a longtime uh, security expert on the Macintosh. Mm. tweeted that there is a zero-day bypass of the new Mojave uh, privacy controls permitting a user, uh, uh, a bad guy to access a user's address book. He posted a 60-second video on Vimeo to uh, demonstrate it. But uh, I imagine this will get fixed pretty pretty darn quick, right? Yeah, it doesn't look like a huge threat, and it's probably going to get fixed in a yeah. pretty quick. Do you, do you need local access to do it? It looks like you do. I believe so. Yeah, and it only yeah. gives you it doesn't it doesn't work with all of the privacy panes. Just I think the contacts one. Yeah. There was also a lot. Well, while you were away, Leo, there was Apple changed their privacy <laughs> policy to include some language about how they're creating a unique identifier based on the usage what? metrics of your machine. What? Uh, so basically what happens is they take a bunch of metadata, things like how many messages, how many emails you have, and they calculate uh, a token number. And they use that token number whenever you make a purchase on iTunes to try to make sure it's actually you making that purchase. Because theoretically, there was a problem with a bunch of hacked iTunes accounts in China and Singapore. And this is just one more layer of defense in depth that they can use to try to verify that it's actually you making the purchase. And yet nothing is perfect, so it might you know, let some bad transactions through. It might flag some good ones, but it was one more number. And there were a bunch of articles freaking out about Apple, you know, spying on all your data. But they do the calculation locally. They come up with a unique number locally. They encrypt that number. They send it to iTunes. They don't persist it for very long. They just match it when you make transactions. Uh, and it's like a, one of many metrics they use to try to detect fraud on, on the iTunes store. Fair then enough. they purge it and they'll do it again if they need to. Fair enough. But that does always make people a little nervous when they hear stuff like that because, of course, that's the trick used by I mean, at the very end, it was very specific in what it was for and how they were doing it. But that part was ignored by a lot of the reporting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, here's another nice feature, by the way, I've accidentally discovered in uh, in Safari. You can have you can set reader the reader mode to go on yeah. on any particular website. So if you really don't like the advertising or the layout or the of, of a particular website, in this case, I'm doing it on ZDNet. Anytime I go to a ZDNet website, it will automatically pop up in reader mode. Which is nice. Yeah. But I mean, you could turn it on and off, obviously, and, and you may not want to do that. Yeah. But uh, what do you think? You don't I, like it? Well, uh, it's it's always a little bit difficult when you have an uh, the manufacturer of the operating system. Yeah. Has their, and, and, they're, and they're basically allowing you to read ad-supported content without seeing the ads oh, and without okay. the... Yeah. The, no, without the machinery right. that that paid for it being able to justify being paid for this, I don't I don't think it's necessarily something they should be ashamed of. But I I would not I I bet there are people who are trying to figure out a way to script around that and say, oh, okay, we're not gonna. Hey, it it looks like you, it looks you're like using you're, reader you're, mode. You're, you're using reader mode. <laughs> Although I do think like unless. I have to double check this, but I think initially it loads the page and it just does it really fast. It replaces it with the reader modes. So you're not seeing the ads, so it probably kills click-through rate, but it probably doesn't hurt display rate because it's still yeah. pulling the code in the initial web get. Let me just see what it's, happens it's, when I go to I do like the dark, the dark mode is kind of like dark. <laughs> it's kind of a dark background now with the re reader mode is also taking on the dark look. So it's... Um, look, it's I, nice can't, I can't... This is reader mode on iMore. You must already you have to go be to doing... an article. 
Yeah, oh, no go to an article. Oh, yeah, okay, an article. I get it. Okay, and let's see what happens now. Whoop. So I don't know if it loaded the uh, page. If it didn't do it visibly. But do you have full control over that? And if you say, no, no, I want, I want I'm more to monetize, you can just turn that off. See, what I'd pay good money oh. for, though, is a default setting to pull the desktop version of a website to iPad because oh, it's 2018. Yes. I go to Reddit on my iPad and I get yes. the stupid iPhone version. <laughs> I, I agree yeah. with you 100% on that one. Yep. yep. There, I just, you know, you're right. There, there are a lot of things I like to override. The, the one thing for me is when, for some stupid reason, they've decided to disable Pinch and Zoom, and just not even and not even double tapping on the text will expand the page so that it, so that it fills the margins of the screen. It's like, wow, what did I do to you or your ancestors to cause you to not want me to be able to read this wonderful content in a way that is readable on my device? You actually had to work to do that. You could have just done nothing, and it would have been wonderful. Yeah. Uh, that I'm still trying to figure out how to just give it a list of pages. And I knew Sal had kind of a, a, a automated way of doing this. And I've just never gotten it to quite work where I just want to take all the pages yeah. and just turn them all to audio and then just pass them all on to him. <laughs> That's my podcast that Wouldn't I want. That'd be nice. Him. Yeah. I remember whole bunch of, like, showing us that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's never really, you know, I've always kind of, you know, you get it into reader mode, you get the text, you then, you know, and trying to get it all working, I've never been able to, I, I can do it on one page, but then it's, I might as well read the page at that point. <laughs> like, I just wanted to just publish it. And I, I think the problem is I've gotten used to uh, The Economist. The Economist has, you know, the entire magazine is in audio and you get used to it. And now I can't read The Economist. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I, like, I'm just like, I, if I sit down and start reading it, I'm just like, I could be listening to this while I'm doing something else. And so. Yo, Jimbo, read then, The Economist to me. The, the short cut will still do it. <laughs> yep. Um, they actually have nice folks with English accents reading it to you. Hello. It's not even like it's like. Let me do this ad. I'm going to do this ad in an English accent so you won't mind it. How about that? It's the new reader mode. We still have ads, but they're all Excellent. done in an accent. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. We were talking about LastPass. And if you haven't tried LastPass on iOS 12 or Android Oreo yet, you're just going to love the new autofill, which makes it completely transparent, uses Face ID. You just, it's so great. And when I, you know, I, I had unfortunately uh, been using uh, iOS beta 12 on my old iPhone. And so I couldn't just copy the old iPhone onto the new one. I had to reset it up, but it wasn't a pain because I had LastPass on here and I could quickly access all of my uh, all of my passwords and accounts and set up all those apps instantly. I love LastPass. Secure every password protected entry point to your business with LastPass. LastPass, of course, we've talked about it for years for individual use, and I know you use it, but your business should use it as well. 33,000 businesses use LastPass. And if you think about it, it's even more critical in the enterprise because, after all, you're giving your employees access to some of your most vital resources like your bank accounts and your QuickBooks and your servers and your data. And, and when they have that password, they can do all sorts of silly things like put it on a Post-it note on the screen or give it to a friend. You know that password sharing is a massive problem in businesses now. A huge number of employees, what it was the number, like 81% of employees admit to sharing passwords with other employees and sometimes even non-employees. LastPass Enterprise makes it easy to share passwords with, without giving up the keys to the kingdom. You keep access to your data secure. You get full customization of access. Over 100 policies. You could set master password requirements, enable password resets, restrict access if you have to. You get security reports, shared folders. I love the shared folders. We use that all the time. We have folders for ops and business and uh, producers. And that way, uh, people who need password access can get it quickly and easily. And it's not just passwords. We put database logins in there. I keep my SSH keys, my PGP key, my software licenses, even my passports, social security numbers, and driver's license. Because LastPass is absolutely secure. Fully encrypted. LastPass itself doesn't have access to your data. No one does except you. And with a LastPass Authenticator app, you get multi-factor authentication. I love the way they do this. It's not a six-digit code with the app. You, a verification button will pop up on an employee's phone to say, okay, that's you, right? Logging into the QuickBooks account. If credentials are compromised, the app ensures outsiders still won't have access. The LastPass password generator makes it easy to great create great passwords and if you use active directory microsoft's active directory you'll love this you can log on to your LastPass account with microsoft active directory 
Data is encrypted and decrypted at the device level. The vault is completely secret, even from LastPass. LastPass also offers, of course, premium for personal use, families for the entire family, LastPass teams for small groups, and the one we use, LastPass Enterprise. We've been using it for years. I've been using LastPass for almost 10 years since they started. Find out more. LastPass.com slash twit. 13 million people use LastPass. It's the first thing I install on my brand new iPhone. should be the first thing you install on your brand new computer or your phone. LastPass.com slash twit. The new iPhone is here. The new iPhone is here. By the way, I did a product red case, but I did get that folio again because I really came to like that on the old iPhone 10. This is the 10S Max. And you've got little and big, don't you? And yes, you one is bigger than my head, Leo. I like the 10S Max. And, you know, I even turned on Zoom because I realized yes. even without Zoom, you're not getting so much more screen. You're getting about 13% more screen real estate. So it's not like, you know, all of a sudden you got a tablet in your hand. But it is easier for older eyes to read. And actually, there are some who think that's the real story behind the XS Max. I'm sorry, the 10s Max. Is it's no, XS is fair. I mean, it's Apple's fault now. They went through OS 10. They I didn't know. learn. I know. Entirely their fault. I know. I like calling it the XS. It's excessive. No, one is a numeral and one is a letter. You must pronounce the first as a number and the second. <laughs> I, I actually am very happy with this. Although... I'm really interested. I think the, and by the way, I haven't had a chance to talk about this. I was on vacation when they announced all this. I think the X or the 10R is going to be very interesting. Yeah. That, yeah. that may be the sweet spot phone for a lot of people, right? There's a bunch of people complaining that it's not 1080p, and I think they just don't understand how video works. Because you look at it side by side with the iPhone 10. Basically, the iPhone 10R is at 2x. The iPhone 10, the iPhone 10s is at um, 3x, and and you could scale. Like the previous iPhone Plus was scaled down 1080p, but then people complained about flicker. This screen is is a miracle of LCD design. It looks fantastic, and you can scale whatever 1080p source you want, and it looks great on it. So. I think it's a lot yeah. of internet. And angst. if you're upgrading from anything with the iPhone 10, you're used to an LCD screen. This is going to be the best LCD screen you've used. Uh, I think this is going to be, and it's a, it's less expensive, right? 750. Same processor, which it's is exactly the same size, except Especially for the, with that screen. You aren't getting the camera. I don't know how how big a deal. Well, the you're, two. Get, you're, get, you're, you're getting half the camera. You're getting yeah. the same wide angle camera, the same wide angle camera sensor. You're just not getting the telephoto. Right. Uh, but on the front, but on the front of the device, you're getting the same Face ID. You're getting the yeah. same front camera. Uh, I, I really think that uh, you got to have, a, I think you really have to have a great reason to buy an X, a, oh, well, I'm going to stick my guns, an XS. <laughs> I, I, Pat, Pat, the character Patrick Stewart plays is Professor X, not Professor 10. That's how that's going to be my defense. Although Grant Morrison screwed us over with Wolverine. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, but, <laughs> but that will save that for hour three of the show. Uh, the But yeah, I, I think I think you have to have a really good reason to buy uh, an XS before the XR comes out, so you can hold both of them in your hand and decide if you'd much rather have. I'm not, and I'm not even saying necessarily that you shouldn't spend a thousand dollars on a phone. I'm saying that if I had a thousand, if you had a thousand dollars to spend, maybe you'd much rather get an XS and get as much mem, get so much, so much, so much more memory on it, uh, more storage on it, uh, than get just the base model uh, XS. So. And it's essentially, the camera is doing the same thing that the Pixel does, where they don't have the two cameras to pull depth data from. So they use the Pixel, the uh, focus pixels, to sort of get a bit of parallax, and then they apply a segmentation mask to it. It's only been machine learned for people, so like silhouettes and faces. You you might be able to extend that to pets, but it's not going to do arbitrary objects the way a 10s will. But if you mostly want to use portrait mode for portraits, uh, then it still does a really good job. Interesting. Yeah. That's basically what Google's doing with their single yes. uh, it's lens. The same uh, system, Pixel different 2. algorithms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got the gold. I think the gold is very pretty. Again, this is uh, the size and the color uh, are really aimed at the Chinese market. Also, the dual SIM capability aimed and, at the Chinese and, market. And the Pittsburgh Steeler fans. And Steeler yeah. fans. Let's not forget. <laughs> and the I've been, I've been, I've been uh, having a hard time. Design. I haven't bought it yet because I had to look at I have to go look at it. I at like a store the gold. I, I wanted to, like, I was like, ah, oh, this is a Steeler fan. I'm kind of like black and gold, <laughs> black and gold. The problem is you gold. don't really see it because, it, of course, if you're a sane human, you keep it in the case. So you'll never yeah. really The Bruins see fans it. know it in their heart, though, Leo. Yeah. Yeah. I like and it. It's it. pretty. Did the uh, Renee? Did you? Did anybody talk to you about that particular formulation of color? It's a very buttery sort of color. 
I don't, I don't think it's bad at all. I th but I think it, it seems like a signature version of gold that's different from other golds I've seen in the in the Apple line. Yeah, so they mostly they spoke about it in terms of watch because watch is the same gold color as iPhone, but people seem to care about it a lot more on the watch than they do on the phone. And it's in and Apple got rid of the addition. There's no more ceramics, so gold is what they thought was the hottest thing in material science right now. And it's a PVD coating. Uh, you know, it's it's a vapor deposition coating, which is similar to DLC. DLC is is a PVD, but not all PVDs is DLC, and it's horribly confusing. But they were <laughs> it's. It, it's a very specific, like, yeah, it's a little bit pink, it's a little bit brown. Uh, and they went from yellow gold and rose gold and you know, champagne gold and rose gold to blush gold with the iPhone 8. And now this is a deeper uh, like version it. of it. Yeah. And it, the band is supposed to be, like, I don't know if it's DLC quality hard, but it's supposed to be as, you know, a very durable the way a lot of PVD coatings are. Huh. And they used it on the inside too. Like the inside is a multi-layer, like they've been doing this for years, but it's a multi-layer, multi-depth coating that really does look very different under very different mm -hmm. kinds of lighting. Cameras uh, quite good, uh, although as uh, a number of people, particularly The Verge pointed out, it's uh, not still not better than the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3 will be out in a couple of weeks. Uh, who cares? Does anybody, does that yeah. really? It's, it's also a lot of personal preference. Yeah. And and I'll, I I do think that there's uh you you can make it you can make it just a decision you can make a determination by doing all this testing of I took the same eight photos yeah. and eight different lighting situations side by side and also we we did we look we we gave you all these histograms all these graphs we did but and you can actually you, you can numerically prove I think that one camera is better than the other according to numbers but I don't I've not seen a flagship phone. Uh, this year, or probably even last year, where the difference between the quote best one and th and the next three was so great that it would be any reason for anybody who engineered it to be embarrassed. It's still a fantastic phone. It will take great pictures, and you will if you if this if the skin tones are a little bit quote too warm, you would probably only notice it if you took it the same picture next to a, a Galaxy Note uh, or a Pixel at the same time. Otherwise, you are not going to notice it, and if you do notice it, you spend all of 0.8 seconds in the Photos app to to the cold to cool down uh, the image, and it's fine. What For about me, like I know some people really love like Samsung crushes the blacks and boosts the satin. Some people love that. I find it a little too warm. Uh, yep. Google is is very almost scientific about it, and I find that a little cool. Apple's somewhere in the middle, and sometimes I like that. Sometimes I want it cooler. Uh, but like Andy said, they're shooting really great photos. The only thing I don't like is that they seem to be smoothing out my selfies. And that you know, was yeah. the I'm question vain, I was going to ask that about. Vain. Yeah, uh, they're using so the I, beauty filter and a considerable amount of smoothing on the front facing camera for selfies. Yeah, some have and complained I want to look like about Harrison that. Ford. You can't really I mean, turn that off, right? No. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'd have to keep complaining until a software update changes that. Okay. Yeah. I do, uh, but l l the other the thing that makes it stand out are the software features they put in. I really like being able to. Uh, there, there are a lot. Most phones these days have the ability to uh, simulate bokeh, like the 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 blurred out background. I love the fact that it's just a setting in Photos now, kind of that you know you're you're not limited by whatever decision you made when you when you click the shutter. Uh, you if you decided that oh. Gosh, the background. There's a there's a there's a guy eating ice cream and he's got ice cream all over the front of his shirt. I'm sorry, people <laughs> were in the public garden last week. I was really hungry. I missed breakfast. But and at, uh, after the fact, you can decide you want to blur it out, or you can decide that no, that's way too arty. Uh, that I screwed that up. It's, it's kind of magical when you get to push that slider to one side or the other and suddenly focus the background or unfocus the background. I would be so, remiss, however, Andy, if I didn't point out that you've had that feature in your Samsung phone for a year or two. Yeah, no, yeah. Know, but, I mean, but it doesn't work. It's as always well, implementation. It does matters. not work as well. I do. I, I will admit. And that. and I and and if you're if you decide you really like it, Focus is a lot better. <laughs> than, yes. I mean, because any anything you shot in portrait mode ever, you can open up in Focus. Right. Uh, that's F O C O S, and it is uh, you can control where it's focusing. You get this great 3D view that if you want to look at what's actually happening there. So it's just a, it's one of the best photo apps or photo editing apps, in my opinion, of just being able yeah. to, to work with that. And I think that Apple needed to take more notes or just buy that team and <laughs> or buy that company yeah. and just take their team. <laughs> Halide too. So, I mean, if you could shoot with Halide and edit and focus, I mean, I, that would be the best camera app ever. Yeah. 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 But yep. you can because you can download yes. all of those. And, and <laughs> oh, and you can also do the the um, 
the aperture shifting in like uh, on your Mac later too, as long as you shot with an iPhone XS or an iPhone XS oh, Mac. That's interesting. That editing is available everywhere, ah, which is kind of nice. cool. And the one like thing that. I really like is that that camera team really did take a ton of really expensive cameras and really expensive lenses, and they're not just applying a blur. In the early days of portrait mode, they just everyone just did a disc blur, and they just chose a disc blur of their choice and applied it to a segmentation mask with, with smaller or greater amounts of depth data to it, depending on what sort of camera they were shooting with. But they created a computational model for a lens and it's got its own characteristics and it will it will um, deform as it goes outside like it'll get a bit of a, of a fish eye to it as it goes further out and if there's layers of light it knows how to treat all those different layers of light separately when it when it sort of models the way the bokeh looks and it's 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 pretty cool technology I also love the fact that uh, during the keynote, they made a, they didn't mention it, but all the demo pictures were, almost all of them, I think, were of people. And you, it was hard not to notice that they had a full range of skin tones uh, in the yeah. models there. Uh, and so they didn't have to hide uh, behind a, a limitation they have where we, it's, we are, our white engineers kind of optimize, without even really thinking about it, happen to optimize it for light colored skin and dark colored skin. Eh, we're not really bringing out the, the full tonality of the, of the image. Uh, but that's that's something that people are, are can should expect uh, any camera to handle very 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 well in 2018. And clearly, Apple was had a certain amount of pride in having done all that work. Yeah, the funniest thing to they, me is when you read did. Austin. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, when you read Austin Mann's review, he, he takes it on these great photo walks every time. And he said it's with the new HDR, smart HDR feature, it's almost impossible to take a silhouette because it'll just still expose those dark areas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the I I did notice that the shots they shot with the XR were playing safe with um, like the hair. I mean, there was hats, there were clean edges. Like the they didn't uh, show as much of the detail, which I do think is going to be the most challenging thing for the XR uh, or the the 10R or whatever, rather than the 10S and 10 10 10S Max. Um, I think that they will probably handle because they have that this the more camera on that side. They're gonna I think they're gonna handle the the bokeh better. Um, you know, in the in the fine details, wispy hair, the small details, because I, I did feel like when we saw it, that's the telltale when they don't shoot pictures with it. You know that there's they're, they're shooting around something, in my opinion, yeah. like they will show wispy hair if it can do wispy hair. Right. Yeah. Benchmarks are pretty darn good. I mean, in fact, in some cases, this uh, outperforms your MacBook. If you have the yeah. uh, early MacBook, your Core M processor can't keep up, especially on Geek, uh, Geekbench uh, 4. Uh, where the iPhone XS Max is getting a, a multi-core, a single-core performance of twenty-one thousand nine hundred sixty-seven. That's that's pretty darn fast. There's one thing worth warning people about, though, and that is like there are very few people in this world who are actually actually know how to do benchmarks. Like a Nantech yeah, yeah. is a, a very big standout. So a lot of the benchmarks you get are people who don't understand benchmarks. And also yeah. the chips are getting so complicated. Like right. you're not hitting a chip anymore. You're hitting um, a, a, a heck of a decoding block or encoding block or an accelerator. And it's very hard to tell even for experts what they're actually hitting on a chip. Right. And that's that's true for a lot of the other technology uh, in these phones and in, in the numbers. Like app launching, are you launching those apps fast or is the machine learning sort of anticipating what app to preload into memory that you're getting the app for it's it's not getting yeah. any easier it turns out that the traffic manager uh, in a C that in an operating system is becoming as important as the speed of the CPU itself. Figuring out how do I split this this task amongst the many processors that are inside this machine to get the fastest result. And it's oftentimes you have you have old style benchmarking that is just gonna just gonna do some strict math that is really can't show off a real world uh, a situation in which the entire uh, the entire uh, uh, the entire uh, board can be used to throw, be thrown at that problem and get the fastest result, which is what would happen if you're actually trying to render an image that you're displaying in a mobile browser. So yeah. with a grain of salt, it's, it's the only thing that's really important is does it feel faster? Does it not feel faster? Because you're never going to you're never going to be impressed at a at, at a chart, just like you're not going to be impressed with the numbers that, uh, D, that DxO provides about a camera. You're going to be impressed with the results you're getting from it. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, so, Apple for years, that controller has been their secret sauce uh, for, for, for several years on the A-series. What about uh, battery life? You've had it longer than in, uh, anyone at this point, uh, Renee. What are you getting? Mine... Mine's been really good. I mean, some people are having the usual problem where they just update to it and it's churning through all sorts of library updates yeah, never or downloading yeah, apps. and Never judge yeah. battery life on the first few days. That's So there are some complaints. Apple did go to a slightly smaller battery, which always is, you know, disappoints me um, because they, they are getting 
according to Apple's tests, and Apple does really rigorous tests. If you compare Apple to a lot of industry tests, they do pretty honest um, assessments it's a based on what they say. battery on the work, 10s, but slightly. not the 10s Max. 10S no, Max 10s Max has a bigger battery, but yeah. uh, they get going to seven nanometer gave them so many efficiencies, and the new software gives them so many efficiencies that overall you get about a half an hour more. Uh, I just, I just think we're beyond those days when you know Steve Jobs announced the iPhone, and you're doing light. You're doing email and light web browsing. We're hitting the GPS and the screen and the data so often, and everything from Instagram to Facebook to Pokemon to our alternate you know, augmented reality is just hitting these phones like a ton of bricks. So I'm always at the camp of Apple. Apple's theory is that you use your phone a lot, so you want to make it as light as possible. So we're going to go for the same amount of battery life and always optimize for the usability of, of being able to carry your phone for a long time. And I, I sort of wish they would move that line a little bit. And instead of going, uh, okay, we've, you know, just leave the weight the same and give me much better battery life this year. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we've covered the phone. Let's take a break and do the watch. Oh, there's one last thing oh, yes. that we should mention about the phone is that some people are having some weirdness with LTE and Wi-Fi networks. It seems to be constrained. So Apple's gone all in on Intel modems. Their feud with Qualcomm has reached yeah, the point that's where they very just don't want to do business with yeah. it. Um, people who aren't used to Intel modems, which are mostly CDMA people, are having some quirks like different bars and things like that. I'm guessing there'll be a carrier update as soon as they suck in enough data and they can figure out exactly what's going on. Um, and that'll all be fine because people who have re like nuked their phone and started it over have been fine so it might just be legacy carrier settings uh, wow. that are messing things around for wi-fi yeah. it looks like they're it's it's jumping on 2.4 gigahertz instead of 5 gigahertz if it has the opportunity and if you turn that off it works fine or again if you nuke your settings and start over it works fine but i'm guessing there'll be a quick update to sort of sort all that stuff out okay yeah okay. that that's that that relationship is now this marriage cannot be saved now the, oh, yeah. now the qualcomm is suing apple they're suing claiming apple. that Claiming, claiming, claiming that Apple handed over Qualcomm's modem secrets to Intel, or at least uh, mis uh, did not secure their secrets well enough to prevent Intel from getting access to them. That's not what you do with a company that you think you're going to be in business with for the next four or five years. Yeah. That's a, that's a negotiating point for future divorce settlement. Yeah, yeah, that it's this relationship cannot be saved. I yeah. think it's pretty clear. Um, and that's and that's too bad because uh, really the issue is not so much now. It's fi when five G gets here, yep. and uh, I guess Apple at this point is going to have to do their own five G uh, modems. Intel doesn't seem to have a very good. Uh, well, there's well, I don't, I don't think I don't think Qualcomm is the only. I mean, or, and Intel are the only ones doing five G. I think there's a couple, yeah, a couple players. But and, and also creating creating a, a creating a modem is so is such a big. All is sticky wax for them to have to manage uh, at Apple. I can't imagine them wanting to take that on unless they, un unless they, unless the all every alternative were even worse than trying to get this big ball of sticky wax off of your hands and <laughs> into right shape. This is not. This isn't about uh, when they create their own CPUs for iOS devices. There's nothing but upside. They get to build a, a a a thing, a CPU that's absolutely tailored for the things they want the iPhone to do. But with a modem, it's not. You can't build a modem that way. It has to be tailored to the things that every network in the world wants to do. And you do not want the headlines on the on a launch day being that it's fine so long as you don't want to dial a phone number with an with a seven or a four <laughs> in it. Or actually transact graphics in any way. It's going to be so tricky that why would they want to do that? Are you supporting T-Mobile frequency 666? That's the only <laughs> one I need. 666, T-Mobile. Support it. Uh, let's take a little break. We'll talk about the watch. I got the 44 millimeter. And Apple did me a really uh, a solid because I foolishly bought the edition for the last two years running. <laughs> the ceramic, very expensive watch. Not really thinking that, gosh, you know, in a year I'm going to replace it. Uh, so uh, this time I got the aluminum. I didn't even get the stainless steel. It's like, screw it. <laughs> I mean, what's the cheapest nice. I can get? And uh, the good news is it still works with all my watch bands. I like the 44 yeah. millimeter, but we'll talk about that in uh, just a second. Uh, and uh, there's a lot, surprisingly, a lot to talk about. I think uh, the general consensus I'm seeing, and I know you agree, Renee, is that this is finally the uh, the Apple Watch everybody wants. You know, they finally, they finally got it. I mean just right. The analogy is iPhone 4, and I think that's so true, not because it's a radical redesign, but because it's so close to the independence that came in iPhone 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
It's it's. I have to say, and I've been using walkie-talkie with Lisa. And I, anyway, we'll talk about that. In just a <laughs> second. She'll probably walkie-talkie me during this ad. Our show today brought to you by, and they come. It's so funny. Gazelle comes back every time there's a new iPhone because they know you're eyeing, and you know there are going to be new Pixels too, and there's going to be new Chromebooks. You're eyeing these new devices and thinking, if only I could get myself one. Well, trade in your old device for cash, and then you can buy. A brand new iPhone or save and get a certified pre-owned one. That's gazelle.com. You can go there right now, gazelle.com, and find out instantly what your old device is worth. They'll give you an instant quote, and they stand by it, which I love, for 30 days. So you got time. Figure out, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this? You even have time to keep the old phone, transfer the data over, and then send it to Gazelle. Shipping is free. The payment is fast, fast, fast. Not just iPhones, but Samsung Galaxy S9s. If you're saying, I wish I hadn't bought that, I want an XS Max or an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 10. And by the way, this is a great place to get replacement phones or for your kids. I don't know if your kids are like mine and burn through phones. Uh, go buy a certified pre-owned device at Gazelle. They have an incredible selection. And this is a good time to do it because this is when all the trade-ins are coming in. Shop for iPhone 6 through 10. For iPads, yes, there's new iPads coming, so check out the standard Air Mini and Pro models. For laptops, they've got MacBook Air and Pro, even Android uh, devices with Galaxy phones. Each device, of course, fully inspected, backed by a 30-day return policy and sold without a carrier contract. But they will work on all the major carriers in the U.S. Gazelle provides financing on all devices at checkout. You just check that box. It says, yeah, I want, uh, I want uh, financing with a firm. Very fast, very easy. If you've done it before, you know you just provide some basic information. You Approval's instant. You can pay off in 3, 6, or 12 months with easy monthly payments through bank transfer, check, or debit card. Just uh, You can do that right at checkout. Don't miss out on getting the best value on certified pre-owned devices, too, at gazelle.com. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -E. It's that time of year again. It's, gazelle. it's a gazelle time of year. All the new stuff comes out. Time to gazelle the old. Gazelle out the old and gazelle in the new. How about that? Gazelle.com. Uh, which watch face are you using, Renee? Um, I am using the, where is it? Right here. Oh, God. I'm using, I can't even twist my arm the right way. It's, it's hard, hard to, to show. Off. I have to tap it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm using Infograph. the Infograph because it's new. Yes, and it has more complications <laughs> Then Carter has little liver pills. So I'm calling it super complicated. Yeah, <laughs> super complicated. So, Some people are complaining that you can't get the old normal complications like the messages or the email yeah. ones. Those those haven't been super complicated yet. I'm guessing when Apple goes through those and redoes them all, They'll we'll get them. options for them. And there's some things like uh, Pokemon Go for some reason. I, I, I don't know. Can you get your... They just have to update for the new super complication template. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I get it. So it literally is a new... Super complication. I'm Apple never called it that, but it's a watch thing, and I feel clever putting those words together in my own brain. <laughs> you know what I love? One of the things I really love, and I just think this is so cool, uh, is you know you normally you'd flip it up to look at it, but if it's off, you can slowly twist the dial, and it gets slowly gets brighter. Yeah. It goes from dim to bright. So if you're in a theater or somewhere where you don't want to bug people, I just think that's it's little things like that. Is that a, that's a watch OS five thing or is that something? This is uh, the that other was question. Last year, I believe. Oh, yeah. was that last year? This is the other question: is how much of what I'm getting in the series four Apple Watch are is uh, is everybody getting? For instance, walkie talkie. Is that is that yeah, ev everybody? So what you're getting exclusively is the infograph, the infograph modular watch oh, face, okay. the fall detection, um, and the echocardiogram feature when that gets yeah. turned on that's uh, a in a month. Feature. You're also getting better reception because it has a RF transparent back now as well as a front, so you're getting better cellular reception. Um, and it's got you know it's got some it's got a new technology in the watch face that allows it to do things like uh, do a lower refresh rate on photographs as opposed to animation, so it can save more power and a bunch of other interesting things. Uh, yeah. So that's why Lisa can't, because I gave her my old uh, Series 3. She can't get the yeah. uh, infograph on there. No, no. Uh, that's, it, it's just so yeah. big. You need the big screen. You really do. <laughs> yep. I mean, I don't know how much bigger the screen is, but it's enough. It's a little bit bigger. And it, I mean, at, nice. that, at that size, millimeters matter. So it's, 40, yeah, it's 44, 42, 44 yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. She's wearing the 42 instead of yeah. the 38. And there's a 40 instead of uh, the new small yeah. one is a 40, not a 38. But the important thing is they're band compatible, Leo. I don't have to fall into a fetal position and just cry. Yay. I know. I was so relieved. And I'm sure you were really, <laughs> yeah. really relieved.
<laughs> to we were we were all at least twenty percent expecting to hear the words watch dongle, watch band dongle. Oh god. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> And it's not in the box. You, watch you have adapter. to buy it separately for 70 bucks. <laughs> Tell me about the fall uh, detection. I've been hesitant to turn that on because I don't want my, you know, it does warn you. It says if you uh, work out, uh, you know, aggressively, you might not want to turn this on because it might think you've fallen when you've just, you know, you're just doing yeah, kettlebells. So, yeah, no. So it, it, you, it's not on by default. Uh, so you can turn it on, but then it will get false positives if you do motions that mimic what it thinks it should see when you're falling. You can say, I'm not falling, though, and start to train it to say that's not a fall. Oh, okay. Um, do you but have your, really yours on? I turned mine on because I was I, I very stupidly did some brake fall tests on the New York sidewalks in the rain <laughs> in my video. <laughs> and I actually got seen and yelled at by people. So that was fine. <laughs> Everything was fine. Uh, and it was painful because the first couple times I did it, I didn't realize I had to turn it on first. Oh. And then it wasn't working. And then I turned it on first. And I had to follow did you just time. throw yourself to the ground? I, no, it's like judo, right? I just kicked my leg out and then did a break fall. <laughs> Rene, Rene, Rene. If, if only Ren had like waited a few months to move to Apple and she could have just done Take one it on the roller one, derby. One, one game, one roller derby bout with this and test how the fall of detection worked. Oh, we've been. We've yeah, been I know. She, or she would have just closed line me if she drove by on her skates. I mean, one of those two things sure. would have happened. I gotta, I'm <laughs> trying to find this video now of Rene. It's my watch. It's my Apple Watch. Uh, Throwing, review video throwing himself to the ground <laughs> uh, I probably also twittered it <laughs> so i guess i'll turn it on then because it, it doesn't immediately call uh, 911 no right? yeah, yeah it offers you the choice and then again you can say no false positive false positive yeah okay so you have a chance um but it's good technology. I mean, I've had, like I said in, in, in my review, I've, I've had family members who literally fell and that was the beginning of the end for them because they yeah. never recovered. They lost their Break mobility. They lost their independence. And, yeah, it's very and I've had friends who've been like dumb enough, I'll say dumb, dumb enough to go mountain biking by themselves and got thrown off their bikes and, you know, not had a happy time getting back to their bike and with, with limbs and stuff trying to get back to civilization. And it, you, maybe this won't help everybody, but if there's a chance it'll give them a better odds of being detected, of contacting people, then to me, that's miraculous. Yeah, and that's and was a really interesting move that if you put your age into the health app by default, if if you're yeah. if you're 65 or older by default, fall detection is turned on. <laughs> Otherwise, it's default turned off. Okay, I have found it, ladies and gentlemen. I now give you Rene Ritchie throwing <laughs> himself a 30 seconds to throwing himself to the Even ground. Then, it'll only generate a PDF report that you can send to your cardiologist. In other words, it's still extremely limited, but it can tell you if your heart uh, immediately it. tapped to call emergency services and alert your emergency contact. Contacts. Critically, if you don't start moving Where? again and try to oh, get up right before yeah, there there long term you data as part of your overall medical plan, again, saves lives. So can the new fall detection, which uses yeah, the new accelerometer is. and gyroscope <laughs> to determine when you've taken a fall and may require emergency. That would take like three or four. <laughs> it is, fortunately, it's an ice, it's icy ground. It's, so, it was raining, uh, so I, I had to go get changed after that. So can the, the new fall detection, which uses the new accelerometer yeah. and gyroscope to determine... Yeah. So, so how, how many business cards from lawyers did you collect in the next three minutes after that and fall? I, I totally I totally stole that uh, that flash from the, the uh, Lucasfilm guy on Twitter. Um. <laughs> uh, next time, get a helmet, okay? Uh, yeah. Did people come rushing to your aid or no? It's New York. They said, "Get up, buddy." No, but I did get, get a very wallet, polite get text from from some people across the street going, "What are you doing? Please stop that." <laughs> <laughs> they texted you. So yeah. okay, so I am gonna I am gonna turn that on uh, because uh, as long I mean I'm just worried. It's I'm just not like I'm I'm working out that hard. I'm just I don't want you know my loved ones in nine one one to get a call saying Leo's fallen and he can't get up. But I do think that that is a really uh, good idea. I think it's a great yeah. feature. And the and the amount of math they put into it, to trying to detect an actual fall from uh, from all the different ways it can it can get a shock uh, from things that don't involve falling down. All the metrics they're collecting about what the body is doing and what kind of impact it is. Uh, it really makes you think about all the other ways that it can help out. Like uh, a, a few a few weeks ago, I learned about I think it's called the fencing response, where if someone has been basically knocked out for some neurological reason oftentimes like you're it's called the fencing response because their arm just simply one arm just simply shoots out like this as they go back and and doesn't you know doesn't it's not for balance just for some reason that arm shoots out and well that happens to be your your, your your wristwatch arm so that plus other data to figure out that 
no, he is that, that he is he is he or she has has uh, is experiencing something that we almost always associate with someone who's been knocked unconscious. So we really need to get on this really quickly. So it's impressive to see how these proactive features could work out in the next couple of years. I would just I would just love to see how they the behind the scenes for figuring this out. Oh, they just put there's it no way to do this other than research. There's imagine there's imagine all people I'm, falling. I'm, no, I, I just imagine like all these people respond to, to Greg looks and may require emergency Oops, sorry. Assistance. I'm playing the video. Don't just ignore me. <laughs> I, I just imagine these people answering Craig. My God, what 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 great luck! We get to actually be inside the spaceship in a super secret lab. We'll be under NDA. This is going to be great. No, not only that. Okay, see this flight of stairs. Now, Dak, surprise when the when when Joshua back here shoves you really hard. And if you feel like you want to fall down, just fall down. We're this is Taka Nakamura data. from the Aikido Dojo in Tokyo. He's now going to be clotheslining all of it. The one thing that we should point out, though, is that uh, people have asked whether if you're having a seizure, well, because the whole thing is that after a minute, if you don't move, it does call emergency services. So people were wondering if it worked for seizures or if it worked from trauma, like if you got shot and fell down, those things. And Apple didn't test against any of that stuff. If it can detect the fall, though, it won't notice minor movements. If you don't basically get up again afterwards, then it'll start yeah. acting uh, on the emergency call service. Here's one thing that disappointed me a little bit. There's less battery in this. Uh, I fix it, tore it down. There's a 1.12 watt hour battery in the 44 millimeter model. That's 20% less than in the 42 millimeter model. Um, but I haven't noticed particularly different battery. It should life. be a little better because they're getting such. They, the, the processor in here, the scuttlebutt is that they're basically using um, iPhone efficiency class cores in uh, Apple Watch now, which stupefies my brain to think that what was, <laughs> you know, the efficiency core in my iPhone from a couple of years ago, I think they were the Chinook class ones, is now inside an, is now inside an Apple Watch. But with everything they're doing in there, it sounds like battery life should be the same, if not longer. And it's uh, and it's thinner, so it, it won't fit under all your super tight shirts, but it'll fit under more. I did notice. I don't. It, this has twelve gigabytes of storage. That seems, isn't that more than the old watch? Or no? I think the old one had eight. I yeah. Think. So because and podcasts. that's good because I'm putting podcasts on here, I'm putting music on here, and I'm putting my audio books on here. So I'm using it. I actually use ten gigs on this thing. That's amazing that I have a ten gigabyte storage in my wrist. Yes. It's a new iPod. I love it yeah. that I can listen to audiobooks uh, from this. Yeah. That's from, and if you're a podcast listener, same thing. It's just really yeah. a killer feature. You know, I, I was, uh, I have the, remember the, when uh, on the 10th anniversary of the iPod, of the iPod they re, they released like a, a poster of the, the hammer throwing uh, woman from right. the 1984 commercial and they added in digitally. You now she's got an iPod on her hip and, and headphones <laughs> and, and wired headphones. Yeah. I was looking, I've got mine on my wall and I've been looking at the other day and thinking that, now you'd you, I, I hope they do it again. Only now she's got AirPods in and she's got an Apple Watch and nothing else. Yeah, in fact, I uh, so I paired it, of course, to my um, my AirPods, but it doesn't have to be AirPods. I have a Bluetooth speaker, yep. and I can pair it to that, and so I can actually listen to music from my uh, Apple Watch without uh, the help of uh, an iPhone. I just I feel like here. Let me play my chill mix here. Uh, <laughs> it sounds so good. And you could play Mac Break Weekly because there's a podcast app now. Yes. Well, Pocket Cast could do that before, right? Yeah. Yeah. They could, but I mean, so could Overcast, but they weren't elegant solutions. And now it's right. almost like a first class citizen. And there's a new Overcast and a new Pocket Cast if, if you prefer those. Good. Yeah. How loud is the speaker on it uh, from, from your points of view? I, I listened to loud. it in the store. Yeah. Like I, I, I forget, I was, someone was 12 feet away from me and I could hear their conversation on the phone perfectly. Well, let me just walkie talk <laughs> to Elisa. <laughs> And you can uh, you can hear. I'm just going to connect to my wife here real quickly. And uh, hey, Lisa, can you talk to me uh, on the air just so that we can hear? I, unless you're in a call, in which case I'm sorry, and I'll shut up now. That's the only problem with walkie-talkie. Last time I used it. Oh, she's eating. It's lunchtime. Okay, so we should get one back pretty quick. It it has a nice big button. Um, it's fairly loud when you talk. I'm going to turn it all the way up. Um, and once you get the connection, there's a little, t I guess she's busy, but there's a little time between the first time you use it and connecting. It says looking for Lisa looking. But then once you've got it, uh, it's it's instantaneous back and forth. Yeah. It's really cool. It's weird, though, because if you're used to a call, like I say goodbye without remembering to press the button. And then like I realize yeah, no right. one hears it. <laughs> saying goodbye to myself. You it's can have multiple like, people, people too. To talk. So you can have, I have uh, two people because I only know two people wearing watches right now. But I can, you can add as many as you want. And the first time you press the, I made put the walkie talkie complication on the, uh, on the, on the front face, of course, of my infograph. 
And uh, it's the first time you press it, it says, okay, who do you want to talk with? So you actually, it's kind of like a Nextel phone on your- uh, What was hilarious device. to me is that uh, Georgia and her husband were setting it up and her husband's like, make sure you have walkie talkie on, this is gonna be amazing. And she's like, yes, presses it, can I have a tea please? And he's like, no! Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all he's gonna get now for the yeah, next, yeah, all yeah, morning yeah. and night. Can I have a tea please? <laughs> can you get me tea? Can you get me tea? Yeah. Can you get me a beer? Like the, it's basically her little ring bell now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell Lisa that. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I really like that. Um, how about sales on the iPhone, the new iPhones and the new Apple Watches? I know Apple isn't going to say anything for at least a quarter, if at all. But analysts are saying, for instance, Ming-Chi Kuo says the uh, yeah. 10s Max significantly outselling the 10s. The most popular is, I don't know how he knows this, the most popular is the 256 gig version. I'm not surprised to hear that. Um, the 512 is in severe shortage because only Samsung is providing i guess the storage uh, all i you know i don't know how much of this this is all i think pre-orders are usually early adopters though it's the geeks who are buying them and geeks like to go right. big i think yeah quo They're does say the uh, xr or the 10r will be a hot seller with more customers upgrading to that model than the iphone 8 i want those year. colors leo i'm so jealous i think the, the 10r is going to be a really nice phone i think a lot of people yeah. are going to want that i've i've even told friends who said oh should i get the new iphone i said I've said, wait, if you can wait till next month, I would take a look at the uh, 10R. It looks gorgeous. And it's, uh, I think they use dark magic to fit an LCD screen into those weird curves. Yeah, yeah. You've <laughs> seen and, and it, I, that's and right. I, I was planning to get the 512, but I have to say that uh, I looked at my phone. My, my, you don't use my that iPhone. much. Yeah. I'm like, I'm at 150 right. out of 256. Right. I, I don't know if I need, really need a 512. You need to take more 4K video, Alex Lindsay. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh. <laughs> it's pretty you old. You also need to buy more 4K HDR content off the iTunes store. Yeah. Come but see our wonderful Disney. library. <laughs> yeah. and so have, that's the one difference is that, and this is controversial, like the, I, the 10R does not have HDR. I mean, Apple has claimed LCD screens with HDR before, like with the iPad, but they've really backed off of it. A lot of TV manufacturers say they do LCD with HDR. What happens is with OLED, it gets much deeper blacks, but it's not as bright. So they sort of say, okay, you can have this standard and LCDs can't get the black levels, but they can go bright. So they say, you can have this standard and we'll sort of just make everyone allowed to say HDR. But I think a lot of people will say you really have to have a very wide range of tones, you know, from details in the shadows to details in the in the highlights to claim HDR. And Apple, I think, has backed away from that a little bit, but other people still want to, want to talk about it. But if you HDR is super important to you, then Apple's not, you're going to have an HDR pipeline, but uh, the display, you're going to have to make up your own mind about. Tell me about the uh, ECG. Uh, it will be enabled later in the year or? Yeah, in the, the US. So the FDA has yeah. approved that. As far as I know, no other regional bodies have approved it, although Apple has you know, taken it to a lot of them. So hopefully that'll be soon. And the Apple show up on your on your Apple Watch. You'll press the button. You'll hold your finger to the titanium electrode on the digital crown. The other part of it is on the back of the wrist monitor. Um, some people were worried that there's only one visible uh, optical sensor, but there, there's still four sensors. They just put them all together in a cluster instead of spreading them out. So now you have the four sensors for optical in the middle, the um, electrodes all around it in that band, and that plus your finger on the crown close the loop and you get what's effectively a one pad ECG. Most people, if you go to physicals, I think you get like 12 pads. Yeah, 12 is uh, normal. For regular. But this is like yeah, the so cardia, a pad. live course cardia, which yeah. is also two yeah. contacts. It, you know, I, I, I talked on Sunday about a post uh, from a cardiac a doctor on a medium saying, ah, it makes me nervous. A lot of self-diagnosis going on, giving uh, healthy people unnecessary tests is maybe not a good idea, especially so they, because so ECGs produce a fairly high, even a 12 uh, lead electrocardiogram produces 10% uh, false positive, he says. So false so, I mean, positives may cause, you know, and now millions of people be using this, may cause uh, over medication, over concern. Yeah, so Apple's really, I mean, they, the way they pitch it is they're really concerned about this. And I should point out that I think like everybody on that team is a doctor. The person who's running it is a doctor yeah. who does 20% hospital time. The person who does marketing for it is a doctor who does 20%. They are staffed to the gills with really prestigious doctors on that team and cardiologists. And they'll all tell you that what this is meant to do is if you are with a cardiologist and you are – trying to track down issues oh. that have been difficult to track okay. down. You can do these at a recommended intervals. And what it does is create a PDF file that you then mail to your cardiologist and they have that data. It, it benefits you in that you have 
constant access to it and can do it at any time. But it's not that for think is beneficial just for you. you and me to do to say, hey, how's our heart doing? No, because you like, I mean, I looked at the results. I mean, I tried it. I looked at the results and I, I can't Doesn't get, I don't anything. know what that means. Yeah. I have one of those cardias, my doctor. but uh, you know, Jeff Jarvis, who has been diagnosed with AFib and is in treatment for AFib, his cardiologist said, get the cardia, which will be very yeah. similar to this. So that's that's the difference. Uh, you know, I bought a Cardi because it was ninety bucks, but I, yeah, same thing. I look at it. Well, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And and they it's not and flat. You're That's supposed good. to send it to a yeah. I'm alive. Let me just try. I think Lisa's now. Hey, baby, can you hear me? Let me just see if the uh, it says connecting to Lisa. Let's just see if the uh, walkie-talkie uh, feature is working. New watch. Who this? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> New watch. Who this? I like that. <laughs> Oh, Andy, you got to Instagram that. That's brilliant. <laughs> I mm. guess, I guess, am I, uh, yeah. I guess I'm not, I guess she's, she came in for and said I could do this, but I guess uh, she's busy again. So anyway. For you most get the people, idea. it's going to be the, the, the new low um, heart rate and the new um, atypically AFib uh, heart rate detection alerts that are probably most valuable. And those you can't instigate. Those will just come to you if right. they detect something. So in the past, it's uh, detected if your heart rate, you weren't doing anything, but your heart was rate elevated, spiked yeah. to 120. Now, if it goes below, what is it, 80 uh, or 40? You set the threshold. You, you can set, set a threshold for yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, that's it's, nice. It's, it's a, I, I, I really have to consider the EKG feature to be marketing until proven otherwise for a couple of reasons. Um, I, I, no, I have no doubt that Apple believes in it, but in terms of what you should expect from uh, a watch with an EKG function, uh, I, f I find out that there have been, there, uh, number one, there is the, the obvious concern about people coming in with concern, healthy people coming in with concerns. Right. Right. Uh, the basic, the basic principle of medicine continues to be that you don't treat healthy people. You treat people who have symptoms uh, and that there's, there will not be a, there, there's, there's no device that can tell you you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a stroke uh, and prevent that from happening. As a matter of fact, I think it was the U S preventative services task force. I might be mixing up my agencies, but I think I think they're the people who were, who had done like a, a a study or a recommendation where they had looked at people who had been assigned the people who who had who had AFib who had been assigned the use of actual like regular professional grade monitors to wear 24/7, and after following a couple hundred people for a year, their findings were that it the the people who had these devices did not have a lower incidence of stroke, heart attack the sort of stuff that you were trying to prevent as the control group. Uh, you, they're also the, again, the, the, the outstanding principle that you don't, tr you treat people who come in with a symptom. You don't treat people, people who come in saying that their watch told them that there might be having some, some heart problems right now. Uh, and so the, the, cause the, the drugs that are, that they, a doctor might give you because your, your watch, again, looking at this PDF, PDF information, might lead him to conclude that him or her to conclude that perhaps it wouldn't be a bad thing for this person to be on a medication. The medication they you're given for AFib actually has real side effects, whereas we don't have proven side effects of not having access to regular EKG devices. Uh, and also, it has to be pointed out that it was approved by the FDA, but the approval came in a, a day before. Uh, and also, the uh, it was approved under a special program that uh, the, that the FDA pu uh, put up to make sure that uh, to encourage software, really new next next level sort of stuff with software for for health devices. So Apple was one of the companies a while back that was approved to say, hey, if you we will give you access to uh, not not it would be wrong to call it a fast track program, but we, you have proven that you know what you're doing, and therefore we will give you access to a, an alternative means of getting approval for something. So they really haven't proven that this thing does what it's supposed to do yet. It's been approved as a de novo class two device, which means that there isn't any precedent to lean on to suggest to, to, to cite when they say that this will work or this will not work. So, but they're saying it's it's in, it's interesting and and potentially useful enough that we want to put it forward. Because we don't think it's going to be it, under the under certain conditions that we have listed in this filing document, even though we are not necessary, we're not yet ready to say that this is a really really healthy important device yet. So uh, uh, maybe it's maybe I, I may made it sound a little bit too harsh when I said I consider it marketing until proven otherwise. But right now we don't know how effective this tool is going to be. We don't know if it's going to save lives. We don't know if it'll even match up match up with. 
the diagnostic tool that uh, the more conservative people are mentioning that, like Renee said, if you are at if if you have been diagnosed with AFib, this is a way to collect data as you go and and prepare it for your doctor. So this is not so if someone's if someone's expecting that, wow, I was going to have a heart attack or I was going to have a stroke, but thanks to my magic Apple Watch. It it, it 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 threw up the the emoji for you're about to have a stroke. Get to a doctor right now, uh, and I was able to go to the doctor and prevent the stroke. It's not going to be that yet. We don't have any 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 evidence of that, and it's not going to happen for another couple of years. I, I think you're completely appropriate, Andy. It's appropriate to be a little skeptical. Uh, you know, it's one thing for uh, Apple's reality distortion field and marketing, which is unparalleled, to really promote you know stuff and make us all want it, and it's it's working for us. But when you when you're getting into these areas of literally life or death uh you know a little a little uh, skepticism is appropriate uh, and and I'm, and I'm not and, yeah i I, sh I should qual and i really do also want to qualify i i'm mostly talking to other uh, to other journalists and other people who are commenting about this that really have been making it sound as though you're you're getting a uh, you're, you have two hours to get to a hospital before the heart attack hits right. i don't think that apple has been that explicit no, and i'm sure the fda no, would be very no. very upset with them if they did i uh, what, what renee said is absolutely accurate what i've been hearing from closer sources that really is we have you have this tool available to you at hand if your doctor would like to have regular EKG readings from you, yeah. uh, and it's not it's not as good as a 12, uh, 12 conductor test that's usually administered by a technician who knows what knows how what to look at in the strip that's coming in, but it's handy that at the at a certain point at a certain time you can actually take this right here without having to deal with a two hundred dollar copay. And by now, the way, the interesting is I go ahead, uh, Renee. No, I was going to say, I had a chance to talk to Apple's health team about it. And this is all interesting for them because they never intended to get into this business. When they put a heart rate monitor on the original Apple Watch, it was only because they could not figure out any other way to get an accurate calorie count. And that's the only thing they wanted was an accurate calorie count. And then as they kept testing it, they noticed that they were able to detect these things. And at no point did they say, okay, let's make a health product. Let's do this. It's just, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this, you know, we've noticed these. Is this, is this real? Are we imagining this? And then very slowly and very carefully, and again, by staffing that department to the gills with practicing doctors, they were trying to figure out, you know, what can we do? What can't we do? And will it be beneficial? Will it not be beneficial? And I think it's a very slow and deliberate process. And they say, like, you always see these news reports, breakthrough sensor for blood sugar, <laughs> and Apple runs in and looks at them and they go, ah, it's years away. You know, they get as excited as we do. But they said, like, whenever you see reports on the Internet, what the actual you be able to ship that to millions of people is not the same as, you know, a press release from a startup. So they're being yeah. very slow, very deliberate, and they're rolling out like one feature, I think, at a time on purpose. It's but it's, it's still very very exciting, uh, and I, I would I would even love to. I don't know how Apple would possibly or, or Google or any other or Garmin would market this, but wouldn't it be great if there were some sort of a industry health standard black box sort of crash <laughs> crash reporter feature that if that the watch will go into a certain like. <laughs> I don't, again, I don't want to be indelicate about this, but it can probably detect that the pulse rate has ended and it's not because the watch has been removed from the person. <laughs> it's probably that, okay, this person has just died and we were watching this happen for the previous five or ten minutes. Uh, it would be it would be interesting if there were a standard like just like there's a there's a flight recorder when you, you you recover from a crash to find out what happened in those final minutes that I'm going to it's going to it's going to take all the data that it saw in the previous five or ten minutes save it to a, a standard file that then could be taken off of the watch and examined to find out here is exactly what happened uh, or yeah. and or. Uh, added to a database to maybe in a few years figure out that no we have seen enough people who drop dead of a heart attack that we can figure out that 62 percent of them had this data flow in off of their watch uh, uh, think, two hours beforehand i think i think that there's an opportunity i mean if if they have studies i mean i'm definitely the game to be part of these studies you know especially with with and, and this is part of the importance of apple's you know anonymization of the data is that I think that we're going to find that it's not just five or ten minutes before. I think we're going to find that it's three months before, you know, six months before, a year before. We're seeing uh, tremors in people's health um, that that slowly affects it. And maybe it's not accurate enough to tell you something today, but getting all of that data and processing all of that data over time could have a huge impact uh, on on life saving uh, techniques and being able to see things that we've never seen before as far as an early. You know, you're going to have to start uh, dealing with the plaque in your in your 
heart now because we know that you're going to have a heart attack, you know, in six months. I mean, not now. We won't know that now, but let's say 10 years from now when we start gathering all that data, there's an opportunity to get gather data about about what we're doing and about how our, our bodies are operating at a level that we just never had before. Uh, and I think that that I think that it, it could make it could make as much difference as almost anything else we're doing medically. I don't think it's going to solve anything today, but I think that if they say have those studies, I would definitely recommend people take part in them. Um, I think that again, what makes that possible is Apple's. Uh, so far, they're they're pretty good privacy approach. Mm-hmm. I do Can think you imagine another- Apple Watch clear, and then it just hits you with electricity. God, I, think, I think that's. I would. I would want to become a hacker just to find out if I. If there's. If there's somebody. Somebody speaking at a conference who's saying sexist, horrible things. I would love to be able to <laughs> use an illegal app. And but but it's but it Apple does. Watch it does. Taser. Under, <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, taser. <laughs> taser watch band and and skin custom face. Uh, but it it also underscores I think the importance that we do need a federal law. I think that says that the the information that your devices collect about you belongs to you. And cannot simply be horked into some database without your permission. Uh, again, and not just simply you have to opt in. I'm saying it belongs to you because the, it, Actually, it would ironically, be. Ironically, that's what's going on right now. There's a committee meeting uh, John, that Apple's testifying at. Yeah, Bud uh, Tribble's going. Twitter. Yeah, Bud yep. Tribble's up there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's kind of that's kind of interesting too. The uh, these comp there there is a unified front from all these people who are competing with each other for personal data. Uh, to saying yes, we absolutely need federal laws, a federal standard for this sort of stuff. Uh, but at the same time, they really want to make sure that they get a voice in deciding what those federal laws are going to be, because otherwise, uh, California is going to give them really, really tough laws that are going to make it hard for them to do business. So I'm glad these talk- talks are happening. What I, I hope that the at the end of this road, we don't have a very I don't I hope that we don't have the industry that is set up to exploit consumer data telling the federal government what kinds of data it's okay to have fewer regulations Please. on so so i can be i can be a little bit cynical about that and, and and you know there are already several anecdotal stories of people's lives being saved or health yeah. being protected by by apple watch and judicious yeah. use of it so it's not completely useless uh, I think that no, I think you're I think you nailed it, Alex. It's it's all going to be about the data that's gathered, and 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 what that data ends up meaning. And if it, if it can be properly anonymized, uh, and you can, I think this, this Apple's not the only company hoping to get this kind of stuff. That's what all of this, uh, you know, fitness industry is all yeah. about, right? It's collecting the big data and and the, trying to figure out if they can learn something from what they know. But the, but. But the big question is, is that I mean, we can't even keep our, our U.S. bases safe. So when you were talking about the the, uh, the the anonymization is so important and Apple's focus on that process is probably why they may end up with a lot more of the data, you know, right. in their silo uh, than other people because they're, you know, and uh, because they, because they're providing that 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 service as, as really part of what they do. As we uh, speak um Oculus is having a big event. They've announced a number of things. I'm just going to run through them real quickly. A new Oculus standalone VR headset, the Oculus Quest, will be coming early next year for $399. Um, uh, the most important part of that, I mean, there's two things. One is is that it's wireless, so you don't have yep. to be tethered to a, uh, and you're getting most of the performance. I don't think it's quite the, still the same performance as your computer, but uh, it's, it's like still. It's like the Go, right? But it's just an updated version it, of that, right? I think it's more powerful. It's kind of, a, right. it's, uh, and I haven't gotten to use it, so I don't know. But uh, Does it do multi-access or is it just like turning your head like the Go? No, no, no. Well, and, and Oculus itself does, the, the, even, the, even the Rift will do. Uh, it, they is, say this is, is the first wireless Oculus hardware to support positional tracking. Oh, cool! Because yeah, I have the so, go, and you can turn around, but you can't move around. Right? No, no. This is this is outward. Uh, this is inward to out uh, or outward tracking. So it doesn't nice. require the the sensor. So theoretically, now I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, I, again, we haven't had the opportunity to test it yet, but um, theoretically, that approach means that you could deal with very large spaces. So you wouldn't be in the eight by you know, space that you're in right now, or the ten by space that you're in by now. You could you could actually wander around a whole house or have, you know, a 30 foot or 40 foot square area that you could work inside of. And that really changes an enormous number of things. <laughs> right now, most Did of us- Did you do the Ghostbusters that. yet, Alex? Well, I, I haven't done the, no, I haven't done What's the Ghostbusters that? thing yet. What are you talking about? You put a, the computer on your back and you have the VR headset and oh. you walk around <laughs> and, it, yeah, so and, we, and it like, it feels real though. Cause like the steps creak and like the yeah. sprays mist on you and they change yeah. the smells and 
So it's yeah, a, it's the, an experience, like a, a storefront you go but into. But it's wireless so that you right. don't have to worry about being tethered. Is there one around here? Yeah, we should and, do that. And yeah, the, the I don't know I don't know who's doing the Ghostbuster one. I know that Nomadic is doing some. Uh, uh, they're doing some tests coming up, Leo. You probably ought to go down and check. They're that replacing out. Um, it with Star Wars at the places near me. They're all taking down the Ghostbusters and putting up the Star Wars. <laughs> oh, is that the Void? Is that is that a, yeah is that at the Void? The Void. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so the, it, the Void. The yeah. two big companies that are doing it are the Void and uh, Nomadic VR. And Nomadic VR and uh, Nomadic uh, the Void is doing a lot of these kind of movie experiences. Um, Nomadic VR, uh, but both of them, you know, is building kind of integrated solutions, and um, both of them are. Uh, Pretty amazing. Uh, really, what you're doing here is building a kind of a low res tactile experience. Um, I think Nomadic VR is going a little further with the tactile as far as things you can touch, and and the Void is doing more with um, things you can hold. I mean, that, I that's like been the impression. Did, that we, we reviewed this or talked about it on the screensavers. I can't remember, but it feels like something we talked about. Probably, that's cool. probably, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's a uh, but it, it it what what you're doing is building an environment so you see something and when you reach out you can actually touch it. And so it's, it's that, a pretty, it, even uh, a little bit of that makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. And and and, and but even without that, when you think about the uh, the the uh, outward tracking that's available in the new in the new Rift, uh, you know, as that develops, it means that you could even even if you don't have something you can touch. Imagine having a virtual uh, museum. You still can't touch the museum pieces either. Right. But you can work. You can walk around them. So you know now King Tut, the King Tut exhibit can be everywhere. Right. You know, and you can wander around Actually, it. it you can look at it and get information. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, it's been everywhere anyway. Well, no, but I, it can be everywhere all at one time. So right. uh, think about having when you think about the possibilities of this. Think about having a museum. Uh, a, muse a museum that's just a 30 by 30 square that is that is just empty and you tell it what museum you want to go to you know like you, you tell like i want to go to a king tut museum or i want to go to this kind of museum and you just walk in and maybe that that 30 by 30 is just your house you know so so these are all and we've been doing the versions that we've been doing internally was we just use a motion capture system and a and um the uh uh the gear and we just put trackers on it and then we could just wander around. And, and when you start wandering around in a 30 by 30 or 50 by 50 space, it really is interesting. I mean, VR becomes an entirely different thing uh, than, than the little square that we've been that most people are living inside of. Now, ours was just some basic stuff with inside of Unity um, and that, that we built um, that just reacts to it and, and so on and so forth as we kind of went down that path. But but the where we're going when it comes to. Uh, gaming, when it comes to school, when it comes to vocational training, um, you know, all kind, there's all, you know, preparation for um, everything from, you know, firefighters to military to police. Um, all of those things are going to be transformed by the ability to kind of wander around in larger spaces with these with these headsets. So we're, you know, when we saw the first uh, Oculus, it was, you know, the first Rift, it was pretty rough and, you know, everything's slow, but you, you like Everything else, we're starting to see this mature into a real a real industry. Uh, let's. I think we have to. There's a lot more we could talk about, including uh, Apple uh, Apple's own employees calling uh, the Apple TV effort. What did the Wall Street Journal say? And NBC Light. Uh, Apple is apparently having a, a difficult time. They killed the Dr. Dre uh, semi biographical tale because it was too violent. Uh, they're That's having a terrible. difficult time. And we, we actually have talked about this. I think maybe you, Andy, mentioned this. It's going to be difficult for Apple with its you know, desire to stay squeaky but, clean to pre create not, entertainment people want to see. Not only, not only that, but their desire for control. And really, the, the reason why Netflix and Hulu and these other companies are getting top drawer talent is because... That's where you, if you want, if you if you're with NBC or CBS, you can't even cast somebody who has one line without putting them on, putting four right. people on tape and sending it to headquarters for their approval. Uh, I don't know how well they're going to do by saying, now, when he when he gets shot, does he? Ha can he just say, oh darn it? <laughs> or could you just? It's like no, he can't. He's going to be cursing up a storm. I have so like, many feelings about it. There's like, I mean, West Wing entertained me for five years without any language or violence or anything. So you can make amazing television without it. But I that's, also think it's artificial to impose it. That that that's I, not I, how you. I, become I, a it's hard. That's not how we. It's okay, hard you to you. You nailed it, Andy. It's hard to attract the creatives. It's not so much that you can't do it. It's just the creatives don't want to get in an environment where they're where they're handcuffed. 
And that's why HBO, do by the way, don't, that was want, famous for. But didn't giving Disney them make freedom. a Castle Rock or something? Like Disney made a brand that they yeah, were they, that they were right. okay with. Yeah, they should we'll just do that and then not have Eddie Q and Tim Cook in those meetings. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't well, know how I mean, successful you know, they're going to be if they get the reputation as Apple TV Network. We're like Netflix if it were run by Ned Flanders. It's just <laughs> well, unless, not something unless you're going to sign up. You know, as speaking as a parent, <laughs> I'm not that against it. You know, like like I have other right. places to go if I want to go to see that content. And and knowing that I can have stuff that I'm not worried about my kids, uh, you know, see, I turn stuff on. And unfortunately, I'm. Uh, I watch a lot of stuff, and so I'm, I'm very, I have a very thick skin about what I'm watching, and I'll forget that there's something in it that my kids can't watch, or that I don't want my kids to watch at eight, eight and ten years old, or nine and ten years old. So, so I think that, and, and I, th and I do, I, I, I thought about this a lot while while they were talking about it, and you know, I, I don't, I think Apple could build a niche. I mean, up until the, you know, more recently, Disney, Disney's done everything, but they built a pretty good base without doing a lot of going a lot going crazy. Um, you know, Pixar's done okay without a lot of gratuitous violence and, and swearing. I mean, they, 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 yeah, they sold a couple, you know, uh, tickets. So I don't think that it's impossible to build a lot of content. And Apple has the one Trump card uh, that, that I think everybody else can't do, which is that they can outbid anybody that they want to any day. That's, you know, they, by the and, way, and, that's and, the epithet that, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, some Apple employees are calling it expensive NBC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but it's you know the Reese the 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 Witherspoon Aniston uh, yeah. there is being rumored to be twelve million dollars yeah. an episode. Uh, that is a, I mean uh, in in that is a huge number. Like no, no matter how you turn that, that's a that's a massive number. I mean so so for for a single episode. And so uh, I mean in today's day we we do see episodes that big, and things like Game of Thrones are more expensive than that. But but we don't see that many, and definitely right. ones that are drama. You know like dr you don't you don't see dramas that are. Uh, I think that ER, I think I heard, was in the, like the six to nine million kind of range. And a lot of that's, you know, the salaries and talent, yeah. <laughs> everything else, talent. Um, so and, and, and that's that's also something we haven't even seen start to really uh, well, it is starting to rear its ugly head, which is that when you have Netflix and when you have, you know, these buyouts, there aren't the same residual structures that there were with TV, with um, syndication and, and and so on and so forth. So the unions are now starting to go, uh, you know, like now that the whole thing is like it was like a little business and now it's a big business and the unions are starting to want to talk about that, <laughs> you know, like about about who, how their how their their constituents are being represented and, you know, what you know, what what money they're going to get in the future. Netflix is like, I'm going to throw you a pile of cash and I don't want to have another conversation about it. Yep. And so far, it, cre creative control has gotten Netflix a long way and money. Um, they're paying, they're out, other than Apple, I think that they're probably outbidding almost everybody, you know, uh, as far as online um, goes. Uh, and, um, uh, but Apple, again, has has some trump cards that they that they can use. I don't, I don't think that, that it necessarily is an impossible thing for them to keep it clean. Uh, I do think it's the one argument against that whether they eventually... Sometimes just want to give up and just buy Disney, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, which I still think is still possible. It's just it, it's just it's just a difficult thing to swallow the idea that they they made this entire movie about Dre and then decided, eh, nah, it's like that's they that's do that with a lot of products. It's maybe no, I, because I, he left the company. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they said it was but I mean, the orgies. But I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. That's a, that's a that's a terrible precedent for for if, what if they spend all that money on the on the Reese Witherspoon show and then they say, you know what, Reese. Nah, we're not gonna we're not gonna release it. There are well, there are many movies that that happens to. Like like like, like, like I know, we, we I don't know, want to think know, too far. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of movies that just get knifed and and it's never never see the light of day or they get pushed to v, VHS or they get pushed. You know, there's a lot of like there you'll see stuff in in or, the list or, of for actors a, where you go. Or find isn't that the rumor for the new X Men movie that like the new X Men movie might never come out because really? Disney's bought them now? Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. But yeah. The, but 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 again, who's what makes Apple attractive? Uh, to this people who are already saying we you're not you're not our first choice maybe we want to, we want to be alongside all the great content on Netflix and Hulu and all these other and uh, Filmstruck maybe even uh, you're gonna say them but you'll give us our you, it's not just about getting the money to to go forward it's like do you give me an assurance that if, if we suffer through every single meeting you make us suffer through in planning this and shooting this that you're not just gonna simply say. Are, we don't like red, and there's a lot of red. Like if the sunset is red, and she's got red hair. Like, yeah, we don't. We're not, we're not gonna do it. But that's I, I, as someone who. I mean, I'm sorry, as someone who worked in the film industry, I'm that sorry. is what producers do. I mean, like, like I don't. They, I, I, like I don't, don't want to. I'm not trying to, fi to film splain to you. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, like that is like the welcome to the world of of movie making, where you have these executives telling you, like, when they're explaining what Apple said, I was like, well, I've we've seen that before. Like, like you know, it's it's not directors that have a lot of uh, leverage can be tell them to go, you know, go fly a kite, but. But it's not usual. I mean, there's a lot of times when things get re-edited. You, you hear the director's cut is basically the, you know, screw you. This is what it should have been because the producers decided they were going to do something else. And it actually seems and so like it's more often the case than not. No, oh, it's 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 almost yeah. always the case because yeah. because we have to remember that that Hollywood is is not full of creatives. They're full yeah. of bankers. Right. You know, and so the and so the thing is is that they are trying. You know, they put a lot of money into this and they want their ROI. And so they're they're looking at how to the you know Hollywood is is looking at how to maximize their ROI uh, at every moment. And and so uh, Apple is the, the interesting thing is is that Apple and the other. Uh, you know, are not necessarily trying to maximize RMI, R, 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 ROI, which is a very interesting thing because they're thinking about other things. Like Netflix is trying to serve many, many uh, groups, and and it's kind of like they need to be able to have be everything to everyone, which is a very complicated problem for them. And and so uh, and so, but they they have the math to do that. You know, Apple is trying to build its niche. What is it going to make it different? I mean, the reality is on our, on our Apple TV and given the timing, most of us that have an Apple TV are going to have, we're going to have Netflix. We're going to have Amazon prime. We're going to have Hulu. We're going to have, you know, like we're already going to have all of those things. So Apple is going to have to find some, you know, niche to keep, you know, they're, they don't need to replace any of those or even compete with those. They just need to simply have some reason that we pay a little bit more for Apple Music, or maybe it's just included in Apple Music, and it just makes it stickier and makes us makes more people sign up for Apple Music. So if it, maybe it's Apple Media, and it's still the same price, or it's two dollars more, and they grow instead of two and a half times faster than Spotify, they grow four times faster than Spotify. I mean, that math makes sense for Apple, yeah. and so and they can lose money for a long long time, you know, as they as they figure this out. <laughs> so they're you know that that's the the, the I think that. Um, uh, Apple could definitely, I don't think that this is any death now. I think there's a certain number of people. But what happens with creators is creators look at all the models. You you look at everybody who's buying and you just figure out what shape does this have to be in so that it fits into their shelf, you know, and because and, you're trying to sell stuff to them. And I, I could definitely see a lot of creators. I mean, the big names might not want to do that, but I could definitely see a lot of very good filmmakers just say, well, we'll just not. Uh, Journal has an anecdotal that. story like, about a show, Whitney Cummings' uh, show, based on the Me Too movement produced by the produ uh, producer of Empire. Apple had uh, initially green-lighted it and then decided that, that the issues tackled were too difficult. Whitney and, Cummings? Like, here's the problem. Here's I, the problem. I know. And, and now she's, she's pitching it to Netflix. I, so there's I, always I just, another. Like, well, okay, how, did you, I just, how did you sign a thing with Whitney Cummings and not think that it was going to be a, <laughs> edgy? This is, this is, this See, is, I love Whitney Cummings, side. by the way. I think she's great. I'm just like, I, I love her stand-ups. I love the stuff that well, she's done. But you're like, how could, how me, could they Whitney think Cummings and, gonna, and hashtag me too. I mean, you know it's going to be well, edgy. But I mean, right? like to Andy's point, the, the Cobra Kai people said that they went with YouTube only because YouTube greenlit a season sight unseen. Yeah. You know, and they would let them do whatever they wanted. Right. I think increasingly so. that's what you're going to want. Hey, but they also we got to take a break. We can't go on forever. I need to take a break and get your picks of the week. Before I do, though, let me ask Ask Renee one question. On the Series 4 watch, you've got these new faces, the fire, water, and vapor faces. Yes. Are those available on other watches or just... Yes. Well, with a caveat, so on the Apple Watch Series 4, you can have them full screen or in a little uh, round box with complications. On the older watches, they can't go full screen. They can it. only have the, the round version with so the complications. So if you look at them, you might say, that's a render, but here it is, cool hunting, the video. These are filmed. I knew Alex would be interested. Show, the, show my screen because it's full screen. These are the film... Of the fire, the water, and the vapor faces, they actually it's amazing. used a uh, high-speed uh, phantom. Yeah. I think it's a phantom. I think it I probably it is a phantom. phantom yeah, camera. to uh, to capture these. Wow, I love I love the attention to detail that Apple puts. I just love like that this. somebody pitched that because you, you know this is not something Apple thought of. This is somebody like pitched them on this. Like this is this was like a I got this great idea. We're gonna take a whole bunch of things and do the you know and, <laughs> how do we show the, the new curves on the display? <laughs> Perhaps we can use material. I, I don't think so. I, I think that literally someone just pitched it to them. And and the reality is when I look at it, I mean it is really amazing. And when as soon as I saw it I was like, oh that's you know they I, they shot it straight up with a but I wonder, you know, knowing where, where we are with physics sims, you know, I was like, I don't know if they really need to do that physically. 
not on the, on the watch size. Not in the long run. But it was, it was, yeah. fun, that, it was yeah. fun that they got to. Fun, to. fun to look at it. Our show today brought to you by, and I mean literally brought to you by Cashfly. If you downloaded this show, you downloaded it from Cashfly, our content distribution network. We literally uh, get petabytes of file transfer every month off of their CDN. And, and, and the thing, the best thing you can say about infrastructure is you don't even know it exists. It just works. It just happens. Uh, remember the last time, do you have a CDN? You were woken up in the middle of the night with a frantic phone call because your CDN was out again. I haven't had that call in almost 10 years. But if you have, you've definitely got to switch to Cashfly. Cashfly has been building trusted CDN relationships since 2002. They eliminate outages, guaranteeing 100% availability with a bulletproof 100% SLA. Helping you reach new markets, controlling costs. Oh, and I mean controlling costs. We couldn't do this if Cashfly did not save us so much money. And man, are they great. An expert team of smart, easy to talk to, agile techs that can answer all your questions the first time. You won't get passed around from department to department. Our experience with Cashfly has been stellar. Stellar. If you have to deliver software or content of any kind, if, you're, if you rely on content getting to your consumers fast, easily, transparently, see that Twit logo? Well, we're joined by some pretty big names that use Cashfly. By the way, one of the problems we had is impossible to predict how many downloads any show is going to get at any given time, what the ultimate bandwidth consumption per month will be. And, and it's frustrating when companies lock you into a contract that isn't flexible. It's not built around your unusual unique situation your demand and your traffic patterns and then you all of a sudden you're, you're logging in every day to see oh my god have i gone over the <laughs> have i gone over the limit what's my bill going to be no make this the last month your cdn bill gives you a headache say goodbye to all those logins and all that anxiety you're trying to track your cdn usage on average customers who switch to cashfly save more than 20 percent 20 percent join the thousands of others who trust cashfly's reliable network let Cashfly give you some sanity back. Actually, we have a special site, twit.cashfly.com. You can go there and get a complimentary detail analysis of your current CDN bill, your usage trends, and see if you're leaving 20% or more on the table. Twit.cashfly.com. And as we always have for 10 years, uh, we thank Cashfly for making all of this possible, audio and video. If you're watching it or listening to it, thank you, Cashfly. Time for our picks of the week. Renee Ritchie, you haven't been here in about a month. I think you probably have a few for us. Kick things off. So the, I mentioned it earlier, but I really want to highlight it. Math, uh, Matthew, who was part of the workflow team, he was originally their marketing and then their documentation person. He's the one who built most of the workflows that were in the original gallery. And I think a lot of the ones that are, are in the current shortcuts gallery, uh, he left after Apple acquired workflow because uh, I think he saw the writing on the wall and he wanted to be out there and talking about it and not inside and working on it. So he's a freelancer now and he's put together an amazing series of shortcut guides for iMore. And I just nice. put the link to his office page because he's got you know everything from how to start to uh, to how to continue he's also set up his own youtube channel where he's sharing a lot of shortcut stuff and uh i know federico vitici is amazing with shortcuts and david sparks is amazing with shortcuts uh matthew was just there and involved with it for so long that i think he brings a special exuberance to the technology and he really wants to just evangelize it for everybody and it's it he's doing a spectacular job imore.com Matthew Casinelli, C A S S I N E L L I. Yes. But if you and just he has a podcast I, and a video and a YouTube channel, oh, nice. so you can listen to all the automation stuff all the time. I really want to spend some time delving into this. I just feel yeah. like there's so much power here, and I'm very excited. So about good, it. yeah. Andy Anako, a pick of the week from you, my friend. Uh, this is a link that you might want to hit sooner rather than later. Somebody, <laughs> somebody seems to have found a way to get a copy of uh, the demo animation that you'll find uh, on the iPhone XS and XS Max in, in the Apple stores. Uh, and so you can you can download this and put it on your Pixel phone, let's say, or your older phone oh. or even your iPhone XS because it doesn't it's not it's just for demo units. You don't get it like on the regular phone. Uh, and it's super, super. So this super. is what happens when the phone is sitting in the AT and T store and nobody's using it. Uh, uh, don't yeah, I don't know. They, I don't know if it was just a direct capture. It looks super it, sweet. This on my doesn't phone. look like a capture. This looks like somebody got it the looks, video. 
it looks like I again I I made sure I right clicked and saved it before <laughs> <laughs> last week when I first saw this link. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I think it was on Reddit, right? Yeah. Very nice. Four days ago, it was posted. Uh, and it's still there, at least at the time of recording. Exactly. Mr. Alex Lindsay, what, how much should so I spend this week? It's complicated. It's <laughs> complicated. <laughs> so, so, the, uh, so th this is, a, this is a, uh, a, a kind of a crazy plug-in for motion. Uh, or, or it's, it's, it's barely a plug-in and more like an infrastructure. It's almost like a whole other application that sits inside of motion. So this is from Motion VFX, and it's called the MO2. It's released this week, brand new. And what it does is it basically builds this really high quality 3D renderer into Apple's motion. So you're paying you know, $50 for motion and then you put this in and you can bring model, 3D models in, you can animate them. And what they did is, it, it, you know, you can, you can bring in them uh, into uh, MO2 and then they have all of these, um, you buy these, you know, piece by piece. And they, they may seem, for those of you who are just playing, $39 may seem like a lot for one project. But if you're doing production and you go, oh, I really need that. I just want to swap some stuff out. So the idea is that you can buy any one of these and they're really pretty. If you, if you, if you roll over them and st sit there for a second, it'll play like what that is, right? Ooh. And so, so what it'll do is that, that, that's just the open, that little start there. Um, uh so this is just one example, not not that part. That's just they're they're open, but that's the kind of animation you can do. But 3D animation. So let's just say something like this. But all of those things are editable. You can change the the model on the top, and you can change this. But all the other looks and feel, and and that's probably not the best example because I don't know why we'd use that. But but the idea is is that they they pre-built a whole bunch of bits and pieces. Now you can of course make whatever you want um, as well. So you can you know throw your own models in, build your own looks. But a lot of these things are, you know, especially if you're doing corporate or if you're doing um, a lot of uh, stuff where you don't have the same kind of budgets that a lot of these have, these guys have just a great eye. So they make all this pretty stuff, but all the things that you see there are editable. You can change the surfaces. You can change the top, the, that, where it says stylish topography, you just throw in new text, you know. And so uh, all of this stuff, they make a lot of great uh, templates, um, but this new one is just kind of amazing It's because it, it's rendering all of this in 3D. In, uh, and if you want something that's going to push your your iMac Pro um, with with your extra GPUs, uh, this is this is one of those things. <laughs> so uh, it kind of turns motion into an entirely different level of of uh, production capacity. So uh, it's you know it's not a replacement for something like Cinema 4D, which I've talked about in the past. It's not going to you know do all the things that a 3D uh, app does, but it does a lot, and it's. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So that's uh, that's MO2. Check it out. It's uh, Motion VFX. Very nice. And that's Mac Break Weekly. I, I interrupt once one quick second, please, uh, just ca just in case people don't go to the twit to the twit site to get the link to that screensaver animation. If you just go to the iPhone subreddit, uh, you should be able to see it, or just search for iPhone demo unit screensaver, and that should turn it up. And how do you download it? Uh, uh, we, I used Downey, which was a pick of the ah, week that I did yes, about a year Downey, ago. Of that, that's my, that's my always result for, there's a video playing on my screen that I want. Downey will figure out what the URL is and download the content. Very nicely done. Thank you. And then there are, if, if you read the rest of that, uh, the comments on that thread, you can see the app that you can get legitimately from the store to play that in the background and all sorts of stuff. Very handy. <clears throat> that is Mac Break Weekly for this week. Thank you, Andy Yanako. WGBH Radio, Public Radio in Boston, and of course his website, ihnatko.com. Are are you coming up uh, on uh, GBH soon? Uh, probably next Friday, I think. Actually, I just got an email from my producer to schedule next nice. week's thing, so probably Friday. Nice. Uh, thank you also to Mr. Renee Ritchie. Here's what you do: you go to imore.com, you click on all the links. Then you go to imore.com slash vector. You listen to all the shows. <laughs> and then you uh, you ask Renee, what's the best way to keep track of all my Pokemon Go? And he'll tell you Poke Genie. That's yes. What, <laughs> and by the way, I paid for that. So now I know how strong oh, nice. my Pokemon are. I've been screenshotting. I, I just did an article on Miltown, that secret new. They're, they're Ooh, selling yes. Nintendo Switch uh, um, Pokemon, and they're doing some weird cross promotion. Mm. That mm -hmm. one with the, mm -hmm. uh, the nut? The nut? That yes, the nut head and the, and the liquid metal body. Oh, yep. yeah, wild. Wild! You can get that, too. I'm more... 
com. Thank you, uh, Renee. We do Mac Break Weekly. Uh, normally on Tuesdays, we, we flip-flopped with Windows Weekly because of the insignia. Oh, I guess I should mention Alex Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Thanks to Carson for putting your picture up on the screen so I wouldn't forget. Pixelcore.com. <laughs> Follow him on the Twitter if you want to know what he's up to. A-L-E-X-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Yep. And, and as our studio starts to ramp up in D.C., that's why I'm here, uh, we are uh, definitely looking for more people to um, be part of the staff. Uh, so if you are interested, just go to Pixelcore.com slash staffing. Uh, fill out your stuff. We're going to have some open houses, and that's how we're going to contact people is through the uh, pickscore.com slash staffing. Um, we'll, we'll contact you and have you over for a tour, and we'll chat some more. Very nice. We do Mac Break Weekly uh, normally Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you want to watch live, you can uh, on our website, twit.tv slash live. You could also join us in studio. Just email tickets at twit.tv. If you're going to be in the Northern California area, we'd love to see you up here in Petaluma. About an hour north of San Francisco. But, of course, the easiest way and the most popular way is just to download an on-demand copy. You can get that from our website, too, twit.tv slash mbw. Or put it on your Apple Watch with uh, Pocket Casts or Apple's Podcasts or uh, Overcast or any one of the casts or Stitcher or Slacker. You know, subscribe. That way you'll have it each and every Tuesday afternoon after the show's over. We'll push it out to you through Cashfly. Thanks to all of you uh, for listening and watching, and we will see you next time. But now I'm sad to say it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye.